Hey there, folks. My name is Misadventurer, and welcome to the first episode of the Hattian Campaign. This is going to be a long-form Let's Play of the 2019 grand strategy game Imperator Rome, featuring the Bronze Age Reborn overhaul mod with a number of changes and tweaks that I've made for balance purposes, alongside the uh, Music Player Plus mod, which adds, I think, over 100 more uh, OST tracks from other games, movies and TV shows for much greater music diversity. And yeah, I, uh, I'm i starting a new campaign. I didn't really tell anyone about this or really tease it, but here we are. I just felt like making a new uh, Imperator Rome campaign for fun for my channel since I haven't really played this game for fun in quite a long time. In my free time, when I've not been at work or being with my girlfriend, I've just been focused on working on my Hegemony overhaul mod project, which is still uh, in in the process of being made, obviously I'm continuing my pretty frequent uh, dev diary updates about that and my uh, updates to the Hegemony Discord, but I wanted to play Imperator Rome for fun, and after all the time I've spent looking at the Bronze Age Reborn code as I work on that project, because of course it's using Bronze Age Reborn as a starting point, I felt like I have a pretty good understanding of Bronze Age Reborn balancing. I wanted to play a campaign for YouTube just for fun, and I wanted to play a pretty difficult starting situation, and I think I found just the perfect one for such an occasion. So, a couple things to note as well. I'll be playing this campaign on hard difficulty, although I've made a change to the hard difficulty modifiers, which I will talk about in just a second. And there's a, quite a number of other miscellaneous uh, tweaks and changes I've made to the underlying code, which I'll talk about as it comes up. But here we are on the, uh, the original Bronze Age Reborn map, not my hegemony version, of course. And we're going to be playing this campaign not as a nation called Hattia, which is where you think the, the term Hattian campaign would come from, but rather a nation that can form in to the nation of Hattia and actually has Hattian uh, heritage and uh, Hatti and Hattian culture. Now, who am I talking about exactly? I am talking about over here in the sort of uh, eastern edge of the Anatolian coastline, the tribe of Paduwanda. Now, as you can see, Hattian heritage, Hatti culture, and of course, that is of Hattian culture group. What's so special about Paduwanda? Well, here is the thing that makes this a very difficult uh, campaign for, for me. Take a look at that culture. We are of Hatti culture, and nobody else on this map other than us is of Hatti culture or of Hattian culture group. We're not only culturally isolated, we are culture group isolated, which is very, very difficult in this game. Now, there is a kind of bizarre exclave of Hattie culture way over here by this lake. Um, there are these four Hattie pops living here in this uncolonized land. By the time we're getting anywhere near close to this lake, I'm sure this will have been colonized and assimilated, and those Hattians will be gone, which means, putting that aside, that one exception aside, the entire population of the Hattian culture group on this map at the start date is either in our territory or in the uh, the uncolonized lands next to our territory that are in our starting province. So this cultural situation is definitely going to make this a very difficult starting situation on top of being on hard difficulty. I'll talk about the modifiers for that a bit later as I discuss the starting situation. But putting aside our extreme cultural um, isolation situation, I should note, by the way, the reason why the Hattian culture is being represented in the game like this, in the mod like this, based on my research, is that although the Hattians were an important Anatolian culture group during this period, they really were more so living in central Anatolia, not southern Anatolia, which is where this mod is depicting uh, the sections of Anatolia, at least. And so the uh, creators of Bronze Age Reborn decided to put the, uh, the Hattie culture in here just kind of for fun, just to include them on the mod. But we uh, have a pretty interesting starting situation even putting aside our cultural isolation which is not the normal way it would work for most uh, nations in the game we also have some unique characteristics going on both with our heritage some pretty uh powerful and special modifiers that are going to help make this a bit more feasible and we have a unique situation going on with our capital area which i'll talk about more later we have some special tile specific modifiers to help us out and get us uh, going on what will be a very, very ambitious uh, long-term plan of essentially near uh, world conquest. Our, our goal here to form Hattia is going to involve conquering basically everything anywhere near us in order to get the 700 required uh, tiles to form Hattia. So we'll take a look at that a bit more uh, as we proceed here. But 
as for our starting situation, we are, of course, uh, of Hattie and Culture Group, Hattie Culture. So we're nearby the Kizu Watnins, or the, uh, sorry, the Kizu Watnin Culture Group, uh, uh, which has a bunch of different cultures, and these are all going to be very unfriendly to us because they're a different culture group. Fortunately, we do have some religious overlap. We are, although unfortunately, uh, we're on the very border of the Luwian and Hurrian religions. We are of Luwian religion. And uh, we're going to have some religious kinship with some of the folks around us, although religious uh, disunity with some other folks as well. So on top of just having a difficult, isolated culture start situation, we are on the very edge of the religious uh, zones between the Luwians and the Hurrians, with most of Anatolia being held by Luwians. And actually, as we'll see, our long-term goal will actually send us down into the Canaanite areas, my old Domasek campaign stomping grounds. I know this area is pretty well. And uh, yeah, we'll see more about that later. But anyways, um, so that's the kind of cultural and religious situation uh, around us. As for our specific situation, we're starting with a very good chief, Ugaris Chel Basid. 9595, that's a pretty solid starting character to work with for this kind of challenge. He is 25 and probably has a uh, a computer-generated uh, wife and possibly a kid. We'll see once we get into the game here exactly what his marital situation is, but if not, we should go ahead and get him married if possible. Head of the Chel Basid family, of course, and we'll take a look at the great families and characters and whatnot as we get in here. Now, Let's talk for a second about our starting characteristics as Paduwanda. Now, first of all, we are a local power, which means that we have between 2 and 39 territories. We actually have 6 territories, so we're on the lower end of that. We can join defensive leagues and have alliances, and we get the following modifiers, and there's a whole bunch listed there. Uh, the most important ones for us to keep track of for any sort of Imperator Rome game in terms of these power modifiers are the diplomatic relations uh, number and the mercenary armies number. So keeping track of how many dip relationships and mercenary armies we can have from our power ranking is going to be important. Of course, we start with one of each, and then we have a number of other modifiers there as well. Now, we have got ourselves Hattian Heritage, which is definitely going to help us quite a bit given its extremely powerful set of modifiers here. So first of all, the Malice of Integration Speed is perhaps the world's best Malice for me because I basically don't care about integration at all. I'm fairly sure the integration being referenced there is integrating a vassal uh, diplomatically. Not 100% sure. If it means that, or if it means cultural integration, those are both mechanics I use really infrequently. I don't think I've ever done cultural integration once because I'm very assimilation focused. And look at that, this is a great heritage for me because pop assimilation speed plus 20% is the next modifier. That is a bonkers bonus. That is the kind of bonus I fall asleep and dream about and smile in my sleep thinking about. So that's going to help us quite a bit, and it's going to be absolutely critically needed given the dire state of our absolute cultural isolation. We need to convert these people to be happy ASAP. And on top of all that, levy size multiplier plus 7.50%. Holy fucking moly, that is a crazy bonus, and that's going to really help us out. Now, as a settled tribe, we'll talk about this more in a minute, we do have a 5% default levy size multiplier, which I believe, compared to the monarchies around us, or actually, I guess that's a chiefdom, here it is. The monarchies don't have any modifiers from that at all, but they also tend to have larger populations. And as we're going to see in a second here, one of the big parts of why this is so difficult is our low population numbers compared to our neighbors. So all these levy size multipliers will help out early on, but what's, where it's really going to help out is once we are ascending out of being a tribe, the heritage bonus we're getting, the levy size multiplier from that, continues with us no matter what kind of civilization we are. So we're going to be able to eventually have a larger levy size compared to what we could have had otherwise thanks to that bonus modifier right there. So that is extremely, extremely strong. And I don't think I've ever seen a levy size multiplier from uh, cultural heritage before. So that is incredibly powerful. Anyways, the Hattians were an Anatolian people that would eventually be conquered by the Hittites, yet their cultural influence on their conquerors is not to be underestimated. So I'm fairly sure we are in a pre-Hittite situation here. I think the Hittites are still down here somewhere. Um, Hit is over here. I don't know. I think this might be a different one. I think the Hittites might be from Anatolia. I don't know exactly what's going on with the Hittites, but they're not a major presence on this map at this time, at least. So I suppose we're fine for now. But either way, uh, we are here, and we are going to be spreading the very uh, rare Hattie culture all over the place with the help of that very, very powerful heritage modifier. Now, we are a settled tribe. Tribal leaders are elected for life by a council of the clan leaders. 
This is a society that has come to settle permanently in its region, embracing a sedentary lifestyle. One military and one oratory idea. As noted earlier, our default levy size modifier is plus 5%, and we have 5% Civ level normally as well. Now, here's something interesting about settled tribes in Bronze Age Reborn. We have 12% tribes and happiness as a reward for matching our two idea slots. And if you've seen Bronze Age Reborn before, you might not be surprised to see that 40% assault power reduction. This is actually a feature of all of the Bronze Age Reborn government types that have a 40% assault power reduction as a government modifier, uh, sort of like with a civ level or, or levy size multiplier that's always in effect in order to create a gameplay effect that the, uh, the team that made Bronze Age and Bronze Age Reborn wanted to have where essentially assaults are much less powerful as a mechanic, and so every kind of government in the monarchies have it, the Egyptian uh, dynasties have it as well, the nomarchies have it, and every other type that's in this mod has it as well. Except for settled tribes, there's a bit of an interesting thing going on here. I don't know if this is on purpose or if this was an oversight. It feels like an oversight. The 40% assault power reduction modifier isn't a passive modifier, it's actually in the reward section for matching up the ideas. So when you match up your two ideas, you actually gain the negative 40% modifier, which you otherwise don't have. That's why I think it's an oversight, because that shouldn't be the way it works. It doesn't make any sense to have 40% assault power be a, a outcome for matching up your ideas, when, when that normally is what you're rewarded the 12% tribes and happiness for. So I think this is genuinely just a coding mistake. I didn't change. I made some changes to Bronze Age Reborn. I didn't change this. This is in, you know, vanilla Bronze Age Reborn. Go load it up and check for yourself to see. Unless they've changed it since I made this video. But essentially, I think because of this oversight, there is a devious strategy we can employ to help us begin this brutally difficult campaign, which is to actually not match up our two ideas, because doing so will keep us from getting the 40% assault reduction modifier that normally everybody has, not from matching ideas, but as a default thing from just having that government type. And assuming it works this way, and I, I did check in game before, before I started recording, and this is actually um, displayed in the game as a reward for matching ideas. If we on purpose don't match our ideas, we're going to miss out on the 12% tribes and happiness, which normally for a tribe would be pretty punishing. But ultimately, missing out on the 40% assault power modifier really dramatically improves our ability to use some cheesy assault strategies that normally aren't really available in Bronze Age Reborn. So I'm actually really excited to see if this strategy works. It does feel a bit like I'm exploiting in exploit, but ultimately Bronze Age Reborn has been uh, out and been supported for years, and I think that if this was um, something that has just not been noticed yet, I don't see any reason why I can't make use of it for this very difficult opening, and given what we're going to be up against, I think I'm going to be willing to use anything available to me to turn the tide. Now, we are of Luwian religion, as noted a minute ago, in terms of uh, where this is the religion of sort of the southern Anat and western Anatolian coastline, and we're on the very border with the Hurrians. Luwian religion, incidentally, uh, results in reinforcement speed plus 5%, which is alright. Uh, global monthly food modifier plus 10%, which is actually pretty good, given that in Bronze Age Reborn, basically everyone has food problems due to the Bronze Age uh, droughts that were happening during the period, and Egypt especially is hit really hard by a stronger modifier, a stronger malice modifier, I should say. And then loyalty of characters plus 3 is pretty great, especially as a tribe, where the loyalty of our tribal chiefs who are going to lead our armies is really important to keep an eye on. Um... And in terms of the lore here, Luwian gods were worshipped by the Luwian language speaking people who lived in central, western, and southern Anatolia. The chief god was the weather god Tadhuns, often pictured on a chariot pulled by horses. Goddess Kem Recepa also played an important role in magic rituals intended to bring rain or heal the sick. Right. Now, as noted earlier, we've got Ugaris Chelbasid 9595 as our starting tribal chief, 25 years old. We've got 27 population, of which only 23 are actually Hati, so we only sort of really have 23 population for army levy size calculation purposes. And I should note, by the way, although I'm not playing with uh, the no minimum levy size mod, I've actually taken the way that that changes the code and just changed the Bronze Age Reborn code to have that changed by default for my own version of Bronze Age Reborn for this campaign. So essentially, uh, the no minimum levy size mod, although not active in my mod order, is active in terms of its main effect on the code in my tweaked Bronze Age Reborn version. So the effect of that change essentially is that 
normally in Imperator Rome, every region by default raises four cohorts at minimum, even if it would raise below that if its actual population was counted. And the change that I've made and that what the mod no minimum levy size did, did before is that that no longer happens. Now, every region will only raise the actual raisable population, even if it's three or below. And I believe um, with our starting population, we raise only a couple of cohorts, uh, not very many at all. And our neighbors definitely raise more. The neighbor that we start with the border with, uh, Adenia, has 82 population, all of whom are Adenians as well. So these guys are gonna have quite a larger army than ourselves, even with all of our levy size bonuses. Again, this this multiplicative this uh, multiplicative bonus is only really helpful when it's multiplying a larger starting levy. So this isn't going to save us compared to a neighbor that has around four times or three times our our starting population. So we're going to need to make use of some strategies to get around that. I do have some some ideas in mind that we're going to try out here. But all that being said. Our other neighbors as well also have large populations. The only one around us who has a, a similar population to us is the other tribe up here, uh, Sawa Saweri, um, who has 30 population, who is which is larger than us, by the way, but they're a bit far away to focus on first. There's some uncolonized land in the middle here. Right, so having said all that, I think I've covered all the main stuff here in terms of the starting situation. In terms of the game configuration, I'm playing on hard difficulty. Uh, looks like my face cam just about doesn't cover it there, so that's good. I've made a change to the difficulty modifiers in that I've removed the bonus to land and naval uh, morale that normally hard and very hard difficulty give to the AI. So normally, um, and this was the case in my Rome campaign, the hard difficulty gives the AI a flat morale bonus, which in my opinion just isn't very interesting because ultimately um, planning around warfare is largely an arms race about having the most morale. Uh, if, if everything else is the same uh, in terms of numbers and whatnot, which is often the case um, in you know situations where you're even thinking about it. So all that being said, I think that the AI just getting a flat morale bonus just isn't really a fair difficulty system, as you basically need to find sources of morale that may not be there for every nation equally in order to match it, which is just a gameplay situation I don't really find to be very interesting as a difficulty situation. So honestly, what I'd prefer with hard difficulty is the AI being more prosperous and being able to have more money, having an easier time managing their population, which is what the hard modifiers do otherwise, other than those morale modifiers. So I've just decided to cut those morale modifiers out. Technically, this isn't really as hard as normal hard difficulty um, without those changes, but this is just something I prefer. I'd rather not have to think about the AI having essentially a flatly easier time winning otherwise equal fights. I would rather have them have uh, economic bonuses than a flat sort of martial or, or uh, morale bonus, right? So ultimately that's just a change I've made. And other than that, hard difficulty will result in stronger AI enemies in terms of their economy, which is great because for me, that means richer lands to sack and raid as a marauding tribe of central Anatolians coming down from the mountains and goofing around. I'm also going to play with army mode kept off uh, just because I want to make some backup saves. I will play this with an Iron Man mode mindset. I'm not going to regularly reload to undo, undo decisions that I've made, but if I do a misclick that is just kind of annoying and I really would really just prefer to reload and, and fix that misclick, I will be open to that. I will say as well that I may not remember to save super often, so I may not really be able to reload that often even if I want to. But ultimately, this is just my preference, and uh, since it's a modded uh, campaign, I couldn't earn achievements anyways with Army Mode on, as Bronze Age Reborn doesn't benefit from the 2.0.4 uh, uh, beta patch that I'm playing in Parable Rome on, where you can normally earn achievements with uh, certain mods only. So having said all that, let's go ahead and get into the game here as the tribe of Padu Wanda. All right, the 4.2 kilo year event. Starting a few decades ago, much of the world has been struck by a devastating drought that has caused the collapse of the Akkadian Empire, the Egyptian Old Kingdom, and the Longju culture of the Far East. It is a time of social upheaval and destruction of sacred sites and great migrations of people seeking better lands. We must navigate these treacherous waters with care. We must endure. So over here, outside of Egypt, we get 25% local food modifier reduction, although as a, a Luwian, we actually get 10% back, so that is not that bad, again, because the Luwian culture does give us, um, where does it say, 
Imperatorum UI, you never fail to confuse me. All right, there it is. 10% uh, global monthly food modifier, so that's pretty good. As you can see, as I said earlier, the assaults modifier is inactive according to this UI. Now, because of this being an oversight, I also don't know if the UI is actually correct because this is not the intended way it's supposed to work. So I'm going to strategically not pick uh, military and oratory. I'll pick some other combination. And this does open up more options because I'm no longer stuck with just those options. I will say I probably will still go for martial ethos because we're going to desperately need any uh, military advantage we can possibly find. But I will say that you may notice quite a few cost changes. That's the main thing that I've really changed with a lot of my rebalancing. For example, I've reduced the idea cost from I think 25 or 20 to only 5 PI to allow myself to switch around these ideas a bit more as typically in my previous campaigns, I picked my two or my three for my slots and then I didn't think about it ever again. And I would prefer for these to be something that are switched around a bit more, which incidentally is actually the design uh, approach I'm taking in Hegemony, where they're completely free to switch around. So not to just uh, constantly reference Hegemony, but it will be hard to not to reference it every so often. So we'll talk about the ideas a bit later on. Uh, first things first, I want to talk about my starting... Uh, well, first I want to talk about my decisions. So first of all, we are going to be going towards... Um, Embrace autocracy, which will allow us to become a monarchy. We can't become a republic or a democracy in this mod because it's before those really existed historically. So we're going to ascend up to being a monarchy eventually, which of course just requires a centralization. Uh, we have to have the absolute authority law, and we can't have a council legal authority law. And um, we, let's see here, there's not clan chief. We need to have all of our, what does this mean? Any character is not clan chief. Loyalty is not less than 33. What does that What does that mean? Does that mean any character in my court or any of my clan chiefs? Well, all of my clan chiefs have over 33, so it must not mean that. Does it mean any character in my court? Actually, they're all over 33 as well. Hmm, I don't really play tribes in Bronze Age Reborn normally, so I don't have any idea what this would require. Any character is not Clan Chief. Loyalty is not less than 33. I don't know. I will figure that out later. Um, <laughs> if, uh, if if this is glitched, because it seems... It, I mean, it, obviously, it, it seems like tribes are not the priority for the Bronze Age team to be double-checking for glitches, um, as we can see. If this ends up being glitched, and I reach the point of being able to do Embrace Autocracy, but for a glitch keeping from clicking it, I'll just use the console to turn into a monarchy, um, or to make this available, or I'll recode it to make it available, because I mean, I'm not playing in army mode anyways, and everything I do for all my campaigns is always on camera, so you're going to see that I'm not going to be abusing my consular power, as it were, <laughs> uh, very often, so anyway, so we're going to be doing this once we're allowed to, but that will take some time to get to, we have to raise up our centralization in order to do that. Now we're not going to do abandoned sedentary lifestyle, which is the one that turns us into a migratory chiefdom. That's just not the plan that I have. I want to stay in my starting location. I actually may even keep my capital at Paduanda, which is a mountain valley. You might be saying, Miss Adventurer, you absolute buffoon, what are you doing? A mountain valley? There's no pop capacity there. This particular mountain valley does have a unique characteristic that we'll talk about in just a minute, which makes it a much, much better spot for a capital than a normal mountain valley. So we'll get back to that later. We also got the Tin Trade Monopoly. This is a Bronze Age, Bronze Age specific uh, decision, which requires owning... Let's see if I can find a spot where you can see them all. It's very hard to see... Oh, hold on, there might be a way of doing this. Uh, does it pop up here? It does. Can we see them all? Where is the rest of the tin? There's one over here. Alright, basically the, the tin uh, tiles are all over the place, but there's a... Uh, I think five tin tiles total in the world. And we actually start with one of them, hence why we have this decision available. We control uh, Lefata, which is over here on the other side of the mountain. And we'll talk about the way tin works in this mod, because it's kind of a unique resource that has a special characteristic of how you can get more tin. But basically, if we control all five of the tin tiles, we get this very, very strong modifier. Discipline plus 3% and export value plus 10%. That's a crazy bonus to our economy. So if we're able to dominate the tin trade, we're going to be raking in the big bucks. Now, the other uh, final thing I want to talk about with the decisions is, of course, form the Hattie Empire. And, whoo boy, here we are with the Hattie Empire. Can I even zoom out far enough to show you all? Yeah, okay. I can just about zoom out far enough to show you. 
the absolute crazy scale of this decision. Now, this decision doesn't require owning all of those tiles necessarily. It does require owning 700 of those tiles. Holy crap. Um, so <laughs> this is going to take a while. This is going to be a late game decision, a very, very long term ambition of the campaign. And we have to absolutely uh, fight and claw our way to get to 700. It's labeled here as provinces, and I actually know now why that is, because in the code, individual tiles are actually called provinces, confusingly. But basically, 700 settlements, 700 communities, 700 tiles have to be owned, and otherwise we can't be in civil war, have to be at peace, and no one else can have formed Hattie. I don't think anyone except for us can form Hattie, because we are of Hattie culture, Hattian culture group, so... That is the goal of the campaign, and holy moly, that is quite the goal. Um, this would involve a larger area of land than even I pulled off in the Damasek campaign, my other Bronze Age Reborn campaign here on the channel. As you can see, we get some pretty cool effects from this. We change our name to Hatia, get some province investments. We had four tribesmen pops of same culture and religion. That's definitely worth it just by itself. Four tribesmen pops once we're in the late game. Uh, <laughs> we also get a center of civilization at our capital, whatever that might be. Probably it will still be Paduanda, and we'll talk about, actually just right now, we'll talk about the reasons why I might keep it at Paduanda. And of course, here's our settled tribe modifier there. Now let's talk about our starting city location, our starting capital city, which is not something I would normally make a big deal about. First of all, we're here in the Silver Mountain province, and it earns that name because both our neighboring Mountain Valley tile um, Cool Lay, and I will say I don't know how to pronounce any of these words, so I'll try my best, but I will probably screw it up a lot. Cool Lay has two uh, precious metal uh, resources, as does our capital, Padawanda. And both of these two precious metal tiles actually have a special modifier. That modifier is Silver Mountain. Take a look at those modifiers there. Population capacity plus 50%. Base resource production plus one, and that's, for, again, for precious metals. So we get two copies, and they both have this modifier. So we get two copies per each of these two tiles. Slaves needed for local surplus minus four. That's a crazy slaves needed for surplus bonus right there. We only need uh, 16 slave pops in the capital city. And in this one here, we only need 11 slave pops. So that's pretty crazy. And then local slave output 40% and slave desired ratio plus 10%. These are going to be some crazy production cities. Now, the one reason I'd be tempted to move my capital out of Padawanda is in order not to pollute the pop desired ratios with all the slave pop desired ratio. And because I could stack up these slave output bonuses if I made this rather a kind of a production city. But at least for the early game, this will be a very, very suitable capital city. And it's very defensible up here in the Mountain Valley. Attackers get a, a two dice penalty when in siege, only 16 terrain combat width. Now the effects on terrain from Mountain Valley are pretty punishing, 20% reduced population capacity. Normally that would result in me never wanting to have any city in mountain valleys or mountains, but the 50% from Silver Mountain does easily compensate for the 20%, so we're ending up with a base 30% pop capacity, which is better than farmland, it's better than I think floodplain, let me find a floodplain tile. Yeah, floodplain. Oh, okay, floodplain's fifty percent. Never mind. Floodplain's really, really strong. Um, but it's better than farmland at least. And uh, yeah, so basically, we are. Um, or actually, let me check Oasis because I think Oasis might be better as well. There's Damasek. Oasis is thirty percent, so it's actually the same as an Oasis. So we're basically population capacity wise, we're in an Oasis population capacity wise in the Silver Mountain tiles. Those being Mountain Val those being uh, Paduanda and Kule. I think that's it in terms of, yeah. Also, uh, Lefata does have the tin import hub. So this is the, the, the thing for all the tin tiles. So they all have plus one base resource productions. We always have a surplus of tin on our tin tiles. And slaves needed for local surplus plus 500. So you might be wondering, what's that about? Well, in Bronze Age Reborn, because tin is a really, really, really rare and very important resource, basically all of the tin producing tiles can only get uh, the number of tin produced from the modifier and from other modifiers as well. So you basically aren't allowed to dynamically add more tin by, by stacking slaves. I guess you could technically manage to get 500 slaves in here somehow. It would not work very well, but it is feasible in the game mechanics, but it's essentially impossible, which means that we're only going to have copies of tin that we actually get ourselves. Let me actually open up the, let's see here. 
Where's the rest of the tin located? I know there's a lot of bronze over here. There's one tin up here I saw before. I'm not going to be able to find it very easily now that I'm looking for it. But either way, the point is tin is very rare. Tin is very, very, very rare. And we're going to try to get uh, control of the tin trade as best as possible. Although that basically requires a world conquest, which we're going to be doing anyways in order to accomplish the Hattie Empire forming Hattia decision. But either way, going back over to the Silver Mountain modifier. Yeah, so... Uh, for the start of the game, I'm not going to be in any rush whatsoever to move my capital, as the normal reason I'd move my capital off of the Mountain Valley because of its bad population capacity is completely fixed by Silver Mountain. We've got a giant population capacity here. Now, the other problem, though, is frigid climate, and up here in the Mountain Valley, there is a very, very cold frigid climate, which does reduce your pop capacity by quite a bit. That's the only, the only reason I'd really strongly consider, as this does cut it down to 10%, which is, by the way the same as unmodified farmland, although down here there is warm climate, so there is 5% added there. So all things considered, we're comparable to farmland up here with the frigid climate and the mountain valley, thanks to Silver Mountain. And Silver Mountain gives all these other bonuses as well. So for now, uh, Padawanda makes for a perfectly great starting capital, and it's very, very defensible up here as well, which is certainly handy given our bad starting situation militarily. And on top of that, it uh, will make for an amazing production city later on. I may end up moving my capital somewhere coastal. I'm thinking um, Maluma, uh, mostly because it actually has a pirate haven. And if a pirate haven spawns... Let me open it here. If pirate havens spawn over here, I may move it over there. But ultimately, I do like this West uh, Kizuwatna region just fine. I don't think there's any problems here. And uh, this tile down here does make for a cool capital because it's right next to the East Kizuwatna region. And over here is a great choke point to block off some expansion. Although, of course, the Hattie Empire does expand out that direction. And incidentally, um, this area here would be roughly a good central location for our eventual empire. Perhaps something a bit further over here, perhaps over here with uh, Saluza. We'll figure it out later. This is a long ways away. This is all mid-game talking right now. Step one is not to get killed immediately by the local... Um, the, uh, the local uh, Kizuwatnans uh, as best as possible. We'll see about that. But um, having said all that, let's take a look at our starting army situation. We've got uh, four units here. And again, it's not because uh, of the default four. We just happen to have four, which given our small population is actually pretty impressive thanks to all those levy size modifiers. 20% levy size multiplier right here is crazy. Default 7.50, Hattie inherited 7.50, and then Settled Tribe 5, this is all additive, of course. This value indicates how much of your governorship population is raised as levies. This means that that big focus we get on cultural assimilation should be put to the absolute most use possible as assimilating people to become hatty and increasing the amount of population that that levy size multiplier is multiplying is extremely, extremely important. Uh, and we already talked before about the population situation with our neighbors here. so. Let's talk about our opening moves here. So first and foremost, we need to be careful not to line up our ideas because I want to actually keep this possibly glitchy um, assault ability uh, not being reduced uh, as much as possible here. The tribesman happiness bonus, although it would be handy, isn't ultimately a huge deal because although we do have, you know, 10 tribesmen, we actually mostly are made up of freemen. I think we kind of have a monarchy style population distribution where we do have more tribesmen than normal, but it's not honestly that many. We're not mostly tribesmen. In fact, we're not even a plurality of tribesmen. We're a majority of freemen, actually, to be to be clear. So uh, I don't think the tribesmen happen to modifier, although it would be handy, is that big of a deal. Tribesmen do produce uh, tax and manpower, but so do freemen, and freemen do produce, I think, more manpower as well. So I don't, actually, I guess I'm not sure about that. I think they produce more tax and less manpower. Either way, um, I think we're fine. And honestly, the manpower being produced is added to our manpower pool. It doesn't directly affect necessarily the levy size, which I think is based just on the population numbers. To this day, I still don't fully understand how levy size is calculated before it's modified. Obviously, I know how the modifier works or the multiplier, but I think it's calculated just based on raw numbers, not based on happiness. I don't know, honestly, I need to figure that out still, but either way, um, we have ourselves a pretty solid starting force to work with. And I do have an opening strategy here, which is going to involve... Actually, before I do that, before I do that, let me get my ideas going. And I have changed the cost of the ideas to be five. I don't think I... I remember if I mentioned that already yet, but I have done that as well. 
I'm gonna go ahead and grab Martial Ethos because we do desperately need any kind of morale advantage we can grab to start things off here. Ensuring that our soldiers and veterans hold a prestigious place in the social hierarchy is key to their contentment and loyalty. Absolutely need that. And then I'm gonna, on purpose, not select an oratory idea, which is a shame because I normally would get sanctioned privileges, which is a very good oratory idea. But I need to not get it in order to not get the assault ability bo uh, bonus turned on. So <laughs> hopefully uh, the creators of the Bronze Age Reborn mod don't watch this video too soon and change it while uh, this modifier being glitched out uh, continues helping me. So I normally wouldn't even think to look at civic or religious ideas or other military ideas. A Kurgarab ordered retreat uh, for more land army bonuses, which could certainly be helpful. I don't think this is a huge deal. Um, the morale recovery shouldn't matter normally. Um, I'm not hoping to have a bunch of different fights in sequence, and the reinforcement speed uh, shouldn't be a big deal either. Uh, standardized construction could be good. We're not going to have a lot of money to do any constructing for quite a long time, especially as a tribe, so probably not. Commerce income 10%. We are not going to have much of a commerce economy, although we do have a fair bit of... Do we only have one tin? Why don't we have two tin? We should have two tin here. Okay, I don't think this is updated, but we should have one copy of tin, one copy of gold, both to sell. They're both being worth quite a bit as well. Um, we'll worry about that later. Uh, provincial loyalty at the moment wouldn't do literally anything because we have 100% loyalty. I could add that on in preparation for other provinces we'd conquer, which would be have loyalty problems because of them being the wrong culture. I think we need to prioritize cultural assimilation basically everywhere except for our, our literal capital as much as possible. With that in mind, pop conversion speed uh, it might be relevant as we are going to end up conquering land held by the Hurrians. Hmm. All right, so I'll consider that. Monthly war exhaustion hopefully is not going to be a problem. I think as a tribe, we're probably okay in war exhaustion. Omen power 20% is often a, a pretty good uh, go-to in Bronze Age when I really like mandated observance. Let me check and see what omens I have here. Sorry for this disorganized opening, by the way. I haven't really structured it very carefully, but I'm just playing for fun, you know. All right, I think Tarhuns with the Discipline might win this one. Um, also, I did change. I, I, I'm worried to click because I'm worried it won't actually give me a, a pop-up. It'll just do it immediately. I've reduced the stability cost of changing around deities. At least I think that I've done that successfully, but either way. Um, all right, um, let's see here. So... Um, in terms of my omen for the first five years, Todd Huns with the Discipline would be a pretty good pick. Uh, Happen Talia with the Freeman output could give us more manpower, but I don't think we're going to really have manpower problems too much initially, uh, given my opening plan of using a mercenary army to su supplement our forces. Yari with the Stab change could be pretty good, but I don't think we need uh, very much stability. We already have positive trend at 50. Pop growth is great, but I think of these four... Tarhuns for the Discipline is the best option for the start here. So I'll go ahead and select Tarhuns. No lore for Tarhuns, so let's grab this. Five years, January 1st, 790. That looks fine. Alright, so now we could change one of these EDs if we like. Let me check and see here. Tribesman output, Freeman output. Eh, that's, that's okay. Is there something else? Oh, you know what? Allah might be pretty good for the capital import routes. I'm not going to have a lot of capital import routes right away, and I could get some, some really important military modifiers for doing this. Also, Fort Maintenance Omen is not that bad either. Losing tribes went up, but as a tribe normally isn't something I'd consider, but I actually think at the minute with our current population... Also, look at this. Noble Desired Ratio Passive Noble Output Omen? Holy crap. Kata Zawuri is a pretty solid looking god for the mid and late game once we're stacking Noble Desired Ratio. The Lapis Strategy will be returning straight from the Damaset campaign, everyone's favorite. <laughs> Anyways, um... I think I'm going to go for Ala. What's this cost? Five stability. All right, that's not that bad at all. That's not that bad at all. I could actually even change a bunch of different gods since I've reduced the cost so much. All right, and I should note, by the way, all of my changes, of course, affect all the AI as well. So although this will make things generally cheaper for me, I've changed around some of the balancing of the costs. The AI benefits from it just as much as me. So, you know, it's a, it's a game level uh, change. Also, as you can tell, as usual for my campaigns, I've removed... All the starting roads and all the starting holy sites for a more sandboxy experience. So let's switch over to Allah to get the two import routes right away. Alright, very good. We have three routes now, so now we can get a surplus. That's pretty pretty handy. I think one of them is coming directly from Allah. Yep. Very good. 
All right, and then I have plenty of stability to do a few more changes here. Uh, although, now, okay, let me back up here. If I go for mandated observance, that's 20% bonus to the discipline bonus, so let's consider that. Uh, is it worth it over all the other modifiers? It'd be 20%, so it'd be a 20% boost to the 5.50%, which would be around a 1% discipline boost. So it'd be 20 PI and missing out on a bunch of other possibly good modifiers, including 10% commerce for just 1% discipline. And it's a shame because I really would like sanction privileges because I really want to get uh, ticking monthly corruption, but that would give me assault abilities. So this is the rare case where I'm trying to not match up the two slots. Uh, I could always get ordered retreat to be extra conservative, but I actually think that getting 1% discipline is better than getting the ordered retreat bonuses, weirdly enough. That again, institutional proselytism would be really good because I need conversion speed. And I might want to convert the Hurrian. I want to convert them to Luwian before I assimilate them. Ah, man. Um, I'm trying to remember. I know in Vanilla and Parrot of Rome, it's faster. When you're talking about a pop that is wrong religion and wrong culture group, it's actually faster to first convert them and then assimilate them than to do it the other way around. So I think I probably should approach it like that. I should try to convert and then assimilate. The problem will be that they won't be joining my levy until they're assimilated, which means that my army will grow more slowly. But if I make use of my mercenaries really carefully, it should be okay. I, I really want the 1% discipline, but I think I need to focus on what I know will be a big problem. Also, why it's my screen glitching out there. What I know will be a big... Oh, it's when I have this mouse over. Okay, it's just a graphical glitch. I know will be a big problem ultimately with um, my expansion, which is going to be the religious uh, disunity. So let's grab institutional proselytism. By amending our religious canon to mandate active proselytism, we should find that much of our work is con uh, is converting... Pe we should find that much of the work in converting pagans is done for us. All right, there we go. So it's not the same idea. It's mismatched ideas which means that we don't get the tribesman happiness, but we also don't get the assault ability. That's totally fine. That is the plan. All right. Um, army maintenance needs to be, I think, on full pay. We're going to lose out on the integrated culture happiness, but I need the morale bonus desperately. Um, over here, I think we're going to go straight to harsh taxation right away. Um, we are not going to have a lot of research. In fact, we have no research at all and no build-up research uh, amounts. Yeah, as a tribe, we can definitely sacrifice our... Also look at this, because we are starting with a mountain capital, we have the mountain background. This is kind of cool. I like the mountain background for all of our characters. It's kind of a kind of a nice look. Anyways, um, yeah, we are going to, of course, um, dismiss everybody and start over uh, with all, all new characters assigned everywhere to min-max everything as best as possible. Hopefully I didn't screw myself by doing these guys first, but we'll come back to that. But yeah, we're not going to have barely any research while we're still a tribe, so I'm going to happily... Uh, go for harsh harsh taxation for the slave bonus. It's a 1.88. Okay, it doesn't do anything quite yet, but it will do good stuff later once we have more slaves. Commerce-wise, I think I want to keep trading permits. We're not going to have enough trade quite yet to justify missing out on the trade slot, which will be worth some amount of money from an import. And then wages-wise, um, local power is 7.50% by default. I could do increased wages to keep corruption going down, but I don't think I can justify that cost. And I can't justify reduced wages either for the corruption cost. I'll just leave it as it is. All right. Um, we do also have one reliquary item, the statue of Tetes Shapi. A statue of Tetes Shapi, the great goddess of the Hati. All right. Well, that rhymed. <laughs> I didn't mean for that to rhyme. Local city building slots plus one. That's actually a pretty good modifier. Um, we'll throw this into a... Holy set that we'll build probably in Padawanda. I suppose I could build it there and just keep it there anyways. Maybe we'll make that a holy site for Tadhuns. Did I change the holy site cost? Um, no, it's still 300 gold and 50 PI. I did reduce, or I did change the cost of Found City. I mean, it's been modified by the uh, by being a tribe, but it's um, it's 100 gold and I think 10 or, or 20 PI. It's been modified by being a tribe. 
in Metropolises are 500 gold at 100 PI. And then one thing I've also done is I've reduced the cost of revoking city status to one tyranny. Tribes actually already spend less, so it's only 0.50 tyranny for a tribe. So I'm going to try to avoid having the tyranny buildup that I had in the Domasek and the Rome campaigns, which, you know, is a fair punishment for my style of gameplay, but it just results in a very slow, very stagnant gameplay experience that I don't think anyone really enjoys too much. As for our other resources here, we do have some furs here, we've got some base metals down here, and interestingly we have some obsidian over here, that's kind of a rare resource as well. Let's see, what can we import here? We can't reach too much because we're quite far away from everybody. Um, can we get anything strategic? No more obsidian, alright, that's a shame. What about furs? We can get one more fur. Experience decay is not a huge deal though, honestly. How about base metals? No base metals, really? Oh my god. All right, how about hemp? Eh, Freeman happiness isn't a, whoops. Freeman happiness isn't a huge deal. Oh, okay, it updated now. We've got a double tin and three precious me and a uh, three surplus precious metals. That's how it should be. Um we really just can't reach anything good right now. I guess we could start getting fruit. I want to get surplus. Oh, of course we can reach a bajillion sheep though. Never change bronze age reborn, never change. We could also get grain if we really want, but I'm sure we're not going to have food problems with this kind of population. I want to start getting fruit in order to get the loyalty of character plus five surplus, which is a crazy surplus bonus for, for this modded resource. Um, other than that, ooh, if I could get double saffron, that'd be really good. Also, local slave output 10% in this province specifically, stacking additively with the slave bonus from Silver Mountain, that's going to go crazy. So let's, I think we probably want to secure the saffron because there's nothing else super valuable. Technically, honey would be the most valuable at 0.4 of everything that's available. Ivory would also be okay, but Saffron's on the more valuable side. Let's secure some Saffron from Tarza, who we're going to be at war with in the near future, so that will probably not last for long, but that's a starting point at least. And then we could get surplus of livestock right away for the pop promotion speed. Might not be a bad idea, honestly. Livestock's fairly valuable. The only other alternatives are we get fruit in order to lock it down, but there's a lot of fruit sellers. They just don't have surpluses yet. Of course, um, Ebla has fruit for sale, but everyone else will get fruit surpluses sooner or later. Or we'll just reach more people who have fruit to sell, who have surplus of fruit, I mean. So I think we're going to be able to secure fruit later on. Um, could also secure vegetables. I don't think I need that at the minute. Um, yeah, I, I think there's an argument for just going for double livestock in order to get pop promotion speed. Do we have livestock in the province otherwise? Let's see. We do have livestock over here. Oh, we actually have limestone over here. That's pretty good. Oh, okay, we got. We actually have triple livestock natively once we expand. We can also do um, colonization whenever we like. However, in Bronze Age Reborn, it costs 20 PI and 300 manpower, which we don't really have the manpower for that to do that right now. I want to save my manpower for my February 1st war with um, Adenia. So we're going to be. Uh, keeping an eye on this. We're going to be doing this later once we have the manpower to spare. We just cannot afford that right now. And it's not worth that manpower right now just to get a surplus of livestock more easily. So I think we're going to go ahead and grab a double livestock. Um, although as a tribe, I think we have kind of low promotion anyways, don't we? Let me double check that. No, we don't actually have a, a modifier for being a tribe. I thought tribe gave us a modifier, but I guess I'm wrong about that. Okay, we, we do have fairly okay, uh, we have fairly okay uh, ratios, well, maybe, maybe not so much up there, but over here we've got some okay ratios. Eh, okay, maybe not. <laughs> okay, people will promote up to being noble at least, so let's try to get some nobles, I suppose. Alright, let's get some livestock, um, and it's just valuable, I suppose. Uh, let's trade for, let's trade with, um, who's far away? Let's start with the Syrians, Kumahi. Where did the Syrians... Oh, there they are. I was going to say where the Syrians go. They just moved up the list. All right, now we got livestock surplus, and uh, we still have precious metal and tin surplus. I will probably... Uh, I'm going to keep the... Okay, I'm, I'm keeping this tin... I just realized tin surplus is 5% discipline. Woof! That is... What would that be? <laughs> that would be a 100% um, a omen power bonus. If we got that right now, would be worth the tin surplus, because that would be... The, the 5% discipline times double, 100%. So that tin surplus is crazy. I will sell off my extra gold, um, but I'm going to keep the tin surplus for sure. 
That is a definite thing. All right, so we got encouraged trade going on here. That's okay. Don't have a ton of commerce though. I mean, I guess we have more commerce now. Eh, a little bit of commerce, but also I've reduced the cost of this down too. I think. Yeah, I guess it's a uh, five. I've reduced it. To. It's ten by default. So again, because of my long-standing habit of just running out of PI because I micromanage everything, I've just reduced all the PI costs. Which sure, you know, it's it's making it easier for me. But the AI gets this too, so it's not really cheating if everyone benefits. We could go straight to cultural assimilation, but. We'd be assimilating just the people here, which is not going to be maybe worth it for the entire slot. Um, what's their assimilation rate? That, okay, that's pretty slow. That's around a 30-year assimilation rate without cultural assimilation policy. What's the population like over here? Okay, so these two are both our culture, and then down here. I think once we start colonizing, or unless we bring in... A bunch of slaves. I'm not going to bother with doing cultural assimilation quite yet. I think what we would be better for now... Can, is harsh treatment justifiable? On, or not harsh treatment, sorry. Um, bleed them dry. Bronze Age Reborn does make bleed them dry. I think a little bit... No, actually, I'm thinking about Terran Dominum. Uh, bleed them dry is actually feasible in Bronze Age Reborn. Tax and commerce would be pretty strong. The food modifier shouldn't matter here. Loyalty is always 100. Slave happens doesn't matter, because then it just affects loyalty. So, okay, Bleed Them Dry is completely on the table. Or should we go for something else? Civ effort would be would be pretty okay as well. Are there barbarian strongholds nearby? Ooh, oh yes, there are. Oh, there's barbs all around. Oh no, <laughs> I should, don't know why I thought there wouldn't be. Oh wait, they're Hattie! Those are my people in the mountains! Ooh. Oh, I did not realize that. That's amazing. Oh my god, they're so far. Holy, holy shit. What <laughs> the fuck <laughs> what are they doing out here? Holy, holy crap. All right. They're, they're, they're everywhere. Oh my god, they're over here too. Oh, we're, we're basically playing as the barbarian culture. Holy shit. Oh my god. Ah. <laughs> holy fuck. The barbs are my people! Oh my, all right, you know what? I wanna, can I can I cause barbarian invasions and then let them settle in my land? This is one way we can get some more Hattie population is by settling barbs in our land. Okay, so this is actually super, super, super good. All of the barbs spawning out of the Anatolian mountains, including the inland mountains. Oh my God, holy. Okay, now I, now I, oh my. <laughs> the, these, all these mountains are Hattie. Every mountain is a Hattie mount. Okay, maybe not that one. Um, this one, <laughs> there's this one random non-Hattie mountain. A couple of them aren't, but oh my god. Okay, I've just discovered how this campaign is fucking viable. Wow, I did not realize that about this campaign. I thought that this was going to be an, an uphill battle the whole time, but this entire campaign, all of the barb spawns and all of the mountains will be Hattie culture, meaning... They're going to be spreading Hattie Pops all over the goddamn place on this coastline, which makes this campaign so much more feasible because we're going to have a native population of settled barbs to start with as we take over territory. So, whew, okay, let's tone it down a notch. Things are things are looking um, things are looking pretty good right now. So, uh, this one being Hurrian is kind of annoying, but all the ones that are in the Luwian area are Luwian spawning. So that that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. All right, <laughs> just about had a, had a little moment there. But anyways, that is an amazing discovery. That's going to make this a much more uh, easy campaign than I was expecting, although not by much. It will help, though, at least. Anyways, so the reason I was looking at the barbs thing there is that if we go for civilization effort, it reduces the or it increases the civ level of barb strongholds, which reduces the amount that they spawn. So for what that's worth, we maybe shouldn't go for civ effort, actually, because we want more Hattie barbs spawning. Anyways, um, all that being said, we could go for Borderlands for the extra manpower. Might be a good idea. But I don't think we have enough population to really justify it. I think we just honestly want to go for Bleed Them Dry for the tax rate. Because we're going to get a lot of tax from this gold. Um, actually, are we? No, we're not. Because gold goes to commerce. Never mind. I guess we get a lot of commerce from Bleed Them Dry. But we also get a lot of commerce from Encouraging Trade. In fact, we get almost, we actually get more commerce from encouraging trade. I think we might just keep it on encouraged trade, honestly, because a lot of our money is going to come from that gold. Although, eh. Yeah, most of it's coming from commerce. Most of it's coming from commerce. 
I think we'll just keep it on encouraging trade for now and, and re revisit that later. Um, okay, so let me go over to my government and go ahead and fire everyone, starting with the least loyal guys first. And I'm assuming no women in this culture, nope, or no women officers. There are assumedly women in the culture. There's at least one woman in the culture. Right, um, okay. Let us fire everybody. What is with these naming conventions? Eshball, Paltaball, Mago. This is like, this is Canaanite naming conventions. Hmm, okay. I guess this culture we're playing as is kind of a weird, unusual culture with its one culture group uh, member. So, uh, anyways, let's assign our positions here. Most important is probably monthly military. Uh, let's omen power first. Uh, no, national tax first. Uh, Hanno Barker. That, that's like literally a Carthaginian name right there. Zero seven one nine. Actually, he's not. An op he's not a family character. Let's start with the family. Now, actually, you know what? I think this one does require seven finesse. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go for it. Hanno Barka. All right. Um, omen power. Ooh, nine zeal. That is much better. I do want really good omen power. We can just add the the low level family characters to the uh, the tech offices if needed. All right. Uh, Bolomenus Hamid. There he is. I like this kind of like combination uh, Gallic and Carthaginian like like design approach, where the names and the outfits are like this weird combination. Like we got this like Arabic style uh, you know headscarf, but then like. They're all wearing, like, plaid, and they look like barbarians. Like, this is kind of a convoluted culture here. I, I kind of like it. It's just kind of a mess. <laughs> um, okay. 9% oh, impact. Holy moly. Or is that already being modified? I think this... I think we had a, a worse high priest or last. I don't remember for sure. But yeah, anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, let's do manpower recovery speed. Oh, these characters are so good. Uh, Eshbal, Gerbalid, throw you in there. Monthly military experience... Uh, Agbal, I'm gonna run out of, I have to, I'm gonna have to replace some of these offices with family characters sooner or later. Oh my god, wow. Alright, um, Paltable, let's just, let's just go as far as we can before we start assigning the family characters. It's just every, every, okay, here we go, finally. Alright, uh, Bush, uh, Bodashtart, Ugarid, National Tribes with Happiness guy, we'll bring in, uh, Ithabal, uh, Aharam, and then... Uh, okay, uh, where are you? whoops, that was a misclick, throw you in there, I'm solved, throw you in there, oh my gosh, this is getting, this is getting grim, ugh, alright, um, oh, I'm gonna I'm have to replace a lot of officers here, Buddhist, Ugarid, alright, who's left, what do I need still, I think it's just two families left that need to be uh, made happy. Or it might be all three of them that need to be, need to be made happy. Alright, uh, who am I... Let me actually do it like this. Um, I'll switch out the war chief for this guy. And then put um, Mil my tribal chief, uh, Milkaram Aharam, over here. Oh, I, I literally... Okay, there we go. That fixed it. Okay, um, and then switch out, let's see, five for finesse, let's put in uh, Abdhaman Ugarid, and then for finesse, put the Apothecary. Actually, this guy is in a family already, alright. Um, it's going to be hard to justify the lower tax rate. Let me actually switch around, so we'll put this guy where Ithabal is, put Ithabal up here. Uh, that's gonna have to be fine, and then I've got one more scorn family, I think. Yeah. Oh, this guy's terrible. Oh my god, alright, let me... Oh, yikes, alright, um... What do, we, what do we have to work with here? Oh, this is grim. This is what happens when you're not allowed to have female officers. You're stuck with these... These low-quality male-only characters, or male-only governments, I should say. What, what can I replace? They're all, all the non-family characters are so much better. I don't want to replace any of them. Alright, fine. I'll replace the wise one, because I don't need a lot of citizen happiness early on. Oh, this is going to be brutal. Oh, please, why? 
Oh, I don't even get any citizen bonus from that. Uh, all right, whatever. This guy's the wise one, allegedly. I guess we'll see. Okay, well, that resolves the scorn problem. That's a good start. We've lost a bit of tax rate, but it had to happen. Okay, uh, and then Civ Advances, I've talked about this in the Domestat campaign. This is basically um, another tech system in Bronze Age where every two uh, Civ Advances that you go, or sorry, every, hold on, um, some tech points. No, okay, it's a, it's every one Civ ad, one Tech Advance, you get two Civ Advances. I got that mixed up there, but basically each of these costs um, some uh, some sip advances to go up, and uh, these are all really 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 strong modifiers that are game changing. So once we're gaining tech rate, we will enjoy some civilization advances, but it will take a while to get there. <laughs> right. All right. So we've got a lot of PI left over because of how much cheaper I've made PI. Um. Honestly, I could stab the pig. I got plenty of PI. I kind of want to save my PI though because I rarely get to have this much PI. But it might be worth getting this going just to get some stab change. We're gonna have so much problems with happiness thanks to our bad uh, culture and and the fact we're gonna be taking over uh, wrong religion areas. I just think I need to go ahead and perform divine sacrifice right away. I may need to do this on cooldown to be honest. We'll see how much PI I actually have to work with here. Offering up uh, our sacrifices will appease the people and increase the stability of our realm. There we go had to be done. I could also change some of these other gods, because it's only 5 stability. Let's see, Civ change, Stab change. Unintegrated culture group happiness 3%, and Omen assimilation. This one looks like a winner. Oh, hold on, wait. Just kidding. Uh, oh my god, there's... I've got... Why are all the deity of cultures so good? Okay. This one we currently have might even be the worst of them. Okay, so Civ change plus 0.05, which is pretty okay. Stab change Omen is pretty good. Unintegrated culture group happiness, which is amazing for our campaign, 3%, passive. Pop assimilation speed, 10% is crazy omen. Aggressive expansion change, minus 0.02 is all right. Monthly PI, plus 10.9, and this one's also monthly PI, plus 10.9, and also loyalty of characters for passive. Freeman desired ratio passive and monthly corruption omen. Holy crap, deity of, as usual in Bronze Age, deity of culture slot always slaps crazy. All right, um, I don't think I need any of these super badly right now for the passive. The armor passive would be pretty good. The Yari passive, I suppose, would be handy, although we've got extremely, extremely low Civ total as a tribe. So we're actually not gonna really gain, we're gonna lose Civ level really fast, actually. So yeah, um, anything that gives us more Civ level is not gonna help too much. Um, with that in mind, switching this to Arma and then maybe doing the Pop Assimilation Speed Omen whenever I have a five-year period, I don't think I'll be at war. It might be a good option. But I really want to start hitting those monthly PI Omens or having that available. I think switching to Arma for now, because I, I can switch these pretty freely because of the cost change I've done. Let me switch to Arma to get the immediate unintegrated Culture Group Happiness bonus, which I think is the strongest of those passives. Let me just think about it again. AE change, Freeman Desired Ratio is really good, but not super good quite yet. That'll be good later for uh, min-maxing. Loyalty of Characters plus four is really strong, although we have good loyalty of characters at the moment. I don't need to worry about that too much. Yeah, I think we need to switch to Arma. All right, there we go. And then we can do one more uh, Uli Yasi who gives us food. This is, eh, this is fine. Pop growth is fine as a, as a omen. Tribes and Happiness, Tribes and Output, uh, and another tribe game, this might be better, but we don't have too many tribesmen. Pop Capacity Passive is pretty good, Pop Growth Omen is good. I think I prefer this over the current god, but there might be better options too. Base Food Capacity, Global Monthly Food Modifier Omen, eh. Pop Growth Passive, I like that. Uh, monthly Ruler Pop King Omen, that could be pretty good. Pop Capacity Pass, oh yeah. As usual, the Deity Fertilities uh, are not uh, particularly impressive. I think... I think the pop capacity passive is probably the best one, but which one do I want? Uh, let me think about this. I think uh, Lulimi with pop capacity passive and then pop growth omen is the best one here. Let me switch to her. I mean, I assume it's her. I don't know, I guess. But anyways, that is that for religion. 
Okay, um, and then let us uh, talk about the opening strategy here. So first of all, let's start our mission. Matter of West Kuzawatna, this is the default generic mission. I don't think we have any special missions as uh, Padawanda. Our fortune awaits in foreign lands, the West, which is actually a statement that makes more sense in the lore of this campaign than in other campaigns, because we are actually foreigners coming into Southern Anatolia. The West Kuzawatna region has been considered part of our borders, yet much of it remains beyond our control. Make sure that it is brought under our influence one way or another. All right, uh, consult the clan. Consult the clan council. Hold on, how long is this for? Oh, 10 years, all right. Silver Mountain, which we currently con control completely. Okay, that's not too helpful. What else? Uh, this is all in one year. Um, Adenia and Lamia, okay. Okay, Adenia is over here. Lamia is over here. Okay, that's kind of random. All right, that's not gonna be too helpful. I guess, I guess we'll get there eventually. Um, all right, and then of course, uh, what we're gonna be doing initially is of course summon the War Council. Summon a selection of your closest advisors to determine a good direction for our next conquest and provide a claim on a neighboring province every 10 years. War Council assembles. The gruff voices barking over the sound of carousing outside yields an atmospheric setting for the latest meeting of the Paduandian War Council. Uh, in attendance are several of the council's most well-respected members, uh, Yitpan, the author of several tactical treatises, Philosir, a well-known rogue and philanderer, and Paltibal, a philosopher and poet of much repute. As debate rages, it becomes apparent that despite the various personal differences between our emphatic advisors, there is one matter they all agree on. All three of her trusted confidants turn to face tribal chief Ugarus, united in the conviction that Adenia must fall to the might of Padawanda. And the reason that they're doing this, by the way, is because this is the only nation that we neighbor, in a kind of gameplay sense, because we border them. And the tribal council looks at what nations you are bordering or are neighboring to determine possible claims. So because of this, we get the very nice consensus outcome where all of our uh, characters here gain loyalty, which is great because two of these are tribal chiefs who are uh, going to be leading armies soon, and they're going to lose loyalty from having more power base for leading armies. So we get a claim immediately on the province of Adenia, and we can make use of this claim as early as February 1st when war becomes allowed. Now, my hope is that in the next month, Adenia does not ally with anybody. And I've got a difficult decision to make about should I ally with somebody to help me fight Adenia. Now, my opening plan is this. I'm going to hire the largest mercenary company I can find and get into my territory within one month to unblack flag them. And I guess there is the problem of them needing to raise up uh, morale. So I may actually hide with the mercs in my army in Padawanda protected by the mountain valley terrain type and just raising morale as fast as possible as i think i can probably survive i could even per perhaps hide in cool so that they'd cross a river into mountain valley we're, we're going to be really really protected over here assuming that there's enough supply here we may have to be in padawanda if we don't have too much uh, actually the supply is pretty similar so i think we'll be okay anyways whatever we do um my concern will be that if we don't have an ally going in, even a large mercenary company and my levy might not be enough to fight the large uh, kingdom army of Adenia, who's going to have their entire 82 population raising up to uh, defend their homeland. So, who do we ally with? Well, I think the obvious answer would be someone with a similar power level to Adenia, like Tarza. This also reduces the chance that they ally with Adenia themselves. Now keep in mind, everybody, including me, start on neutral stance, which means that we all have plus one diplomatic relation. So my best hope with this opening strategy is to basically bum rush out of India before they can form any alliances. But the problem is, okay, if whoever I ally with becomes slightly off the table as my next conquest partner, we are very much in the middle of the region. I may have to make some, uh, some slightly perfidious moves and backstab uh, allies early on in order just to fight them once the truce is up. And I could ally with uh, Sawairi, um, who would be another tribe, uh, but they're not very strong. I do think that ultimately um, Tarza is a good ally partner. They have a large population. Although, okay, no, they're, it's all Tarsans. They're split religiously because they're on that line between the two religions. But religious differences don't affect uh, levy um, levy uh, uh, eligibility, because all those Tarsans count for their levy. So they're going to have a similar levy size to the religiously unified nation north of them, Adenia. So Tarsa would ally with me. Um, 
Diplomatic relations plus 50. I guess they like me a lot. I, I was worried they wouldn't like me because of our cultural differences, but I suppose they're okay with me. What do they have here? Empire recovery speed reduction, that's not going to matter. Anything that affects military stuff. Pop conversion has to other side, that's not very good. Anything around here I need to be worried about? I don't think so, okay. So Tarso would be a solid ally, and incidentally, in terms of my opening provinces here, so they're not in Silver Mountain at all. Um, they're just bordering it, but they're not in the mountain area at all. And then Adania. Ooh, actually, they, they're splitting Adania with the Adania tags. That could be a problem, because they'd be an early target for me. And obviously, Lamia's over here. I could ally, I suppose, with Salia. Salia is not very large, though, and they're also split between Tarsons and Lamian, so never mind. They're not a good target. They're not a good ally, I mean. There's really not a lot of great options here. The issue is, what I kind of want to do is have Tarsa help me, but then I want to immediately break my alliance with them as soon as the war is done. And there's the concern that they would actually defeat the Adanian army at the start and then start sieging Adania right away, which would obviously be a problem. The other thing, too, is that I need to get to uh, Simisui and over here, where is it, um, Ur-i-Ufa, in order to get these uh, provincial capitals uh, taken down. And I'm worried that my Tarsan ally with their giant army will be able to get over there. Although, actually, no, they're going to be blocked by the fort. Oh, you know what? I can actually go around through the uncolonized land and start over here. I want to... Sa so, my, uh, let me explain my plan as well. Whether or not I ally with Tarsa or somebody else, the plan is I spend most of my starting money on the mercs, and then, before I run out of money, I regain some money by sacking Simi Siwe, which is not fortified. And I'll get some amount of money from sacking this. I don't know how much, I don't remember in Bronze Age how it's balanced, but I'll get a, a few more months at the minimum of merc payments, because I don't have anything to sell, I have no extra buildings. I could sell my starting fort, but that's a terrible idea for a lot of reasons, so I'm not going to do that. And I don't have any other way to get bursts of money very easily in, uh, in Bronze Age. So <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be tight, and the mercs. I'll spend a hundred gold to hire the mercs, and then I'll also be spending uh, probably around three to four gold per month on paying the mercs, especially with army maintenance increased. I guess what I could do as well. Oh man, I probably need to actually fight right away because I can't really survive the legion maintenance being this high for so long. I will have a lot of morale bonuses. Let me think about the numbers here. How many? How large are these merc forces around me? So another thing I've done is I've reduced the uh, cohort size to be 100, which is how I'm doing it in Hegemony. I just think it's nice and easy to keep track of, so all the numbers will get smaller, and it feels appropriate to Bronze Age. I kind of need... Because I've got a, a solid marshal on my... I've got solid marshal on my... Um, on my, uh, my, my main chief, so I don't need super high marshal. Actually, what's the marshal on this guy? Okay, holy... Okay, whew. the king is at four, so... We are completely fine. And there's no region split, so they, they have to use their king. Oh, hold on, wait, there is a region split. Oh, hold on, wait. Wait. Hold on, wait. Yeah, they, they do have a region split. What is the marshal of this governor? Eight. Oh, that's not good. Yikes. Okay, so this... Okay, here's the thing, though. How large is this one tile? Eight population. Who lives here? I didn't... Yeah. Oh, yikes. The, okay, this might this might spawn one cohort, but it might not. If it spawns one cohort, their army will probably be led by the eight martial guy if the cohort's with the rest of the levy from the main area. I don't know if eight population is enough to spawn one cohort. I think it probably is. Because I've got four cohorts, and I've got around... What was it? Around 27. Actually, I've got around 23. So may, maybe eight's not enough might not be enough i don't know um either way nine is larger than eight and it's definitely larger than four so i don't need a mercenary leader that has really high martial what i need is someone who's close by and who has a large army so this guy here is nine actually in fact someone who's below nine who can't compete with my main leader for sacking would also be great the 15 is crazy but i just can't that's too low numbers wise Anyone with a really, really big army and who is a smaller number, that's not nine. Actually, I think if it's nine, I think my king or my tribal chief wins the tie of Marshall. I'm fairly sure. I don't want to chance it though. 
sacking the towns is going to be an, an important part of my strategy. And assaulting Adenia, making use of me not having that assault modifier with the large army right away in order to get control of the fort is going to be a, an important part of the strategy as well. So I just need numbers here. I could even delay the war slightly if I can just find... Okay, no one has more than 700. Who has 700 and is not 9 marshal or above and is closest? Oh, you're so far away. Okay, what about the other guy? Okay, that's much closer. But it's still kind of far away. Anyone closer? Who's the closest, I guess? Okay, you're very, very, very close. You could get to me within uh, one month, even. Only 400, though. It is double my army size, but it's almost for sure not enough against these guys. And even uh, standing in the mountain valley over the river with the full marshal and, and uh, offense bonuses, even against the four marshal, I'm worried the numbers won't be in my favor. Because they're going to have... Let me think about this. I've got 20% life as multiplier. What do they have? It doesn't show me directly, but I can calculate it by doing the math. Their autocratic monarchy. What is your... Show me your government type. Oh my god, please. Where's your government type? Uh... Where is your government type? Why can't I see the modifiers? Please let me see the mod. Oh, here it is. Okay. They have no modifier at all. I think what they would probably have... I think they have a law, which... Oh, you know what? I can actually spend some more of my, my resources on my, my law stuff. I could spend 35 stability. Actually, that would... Or, no, sorry, 15 stability. That would put me at 20 stability, which might be a little risky. But I kind of do want to grab... Uh, I actually kind of think barter economy status might, uh, statutes might be better than coin minting initiative. I'm not too worried about... I think I'll get to uh, 80 centralization... Uh, I mean, I'll get to 80 centralization sooner or later. I'm not too worried, because we're gonna it's going to stack up as we get the later ones. I kind of want to get the commerce bonus. Ooh, but that would put me down to 20 stability. I do have a lot of upward stability movement, though, so I think we're going to be okay. I think I can avoid... Rebellion. I need to get my. I need to get my center. I should have actually. This should have been a priority over changing my my omens. That was or changing my gods. These were not priorities. That was a, that was a, a misplay. But this is Iron Man style, so I'm going to continue. Even though that was actually kind of a, a kind of a moderate mistake there. I shouldn't have uh, focused on the gods over the um, over the other thing uh, over the laws here. Um, all right, let's go to barter economy uh, statutes. Domestic trade is a subjective matter. As long as all parties are content with the deal, then we see no reason to step in. Nonetheless, we should legislate for a system of good practice when in engaging in barter trades. Such agreements are notoriously difficult to tax, however. Only plus 0.05 centralization, but 20% commerce income is going to help with our economy. That's going to be good. That's a lot of our PI, but that's fine. We need to get our stability going up one way or another. Coin minting initiative is pretty solid as well, but given our very, very low civ levels over here, I'd rather just get the commerce bonus and have slightly worse uh, upward uh, civ level trend. All right, um, let's also go ahead and raise our army. Let's raise our army in our capital, I think, and have them basically hang out over here. Oh, let me think about this, actually. Here's the thing, right? Actually, hold on. You know what? Five marshal means that we take over the siege. I don't need a mercenary force at all, do I? This guy actually won't take over, and he's the king, and there's no region split. Yeah, this guy's completely... Okay. I need to ally with Tarsa. This five marshal guy is going to bring... He's going to personally, and only him, will lead the army of Tarsans, which will end up being commanded by my tribal chief. There's no need for mercenaries at all. We can still do the same strategy, and if we're leading the siege at Adenia, our assault modifier is what will be considered, so we can do the easy assault under our leader with the Tarsan force. Okay. We are cooking with gas at this time. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but that's a phrase someone's used at some point. All right, so in that case, we have a new strategy here. It's called... Run to the Tarsans very fast and don't get killed by the Adenians on the way over to the Tarsans. So we're going to spawn our army over here in Kul It E. Oh, never mind. We're going to spawn in two groups. That's fine. We'll just walk down and join in. Attachment allowed. What's your hold the line? Really? Is this really the best? 
I guess I guess with just spearmen this is the best. I'll, I'll, oh yeah, because each one's separate. Okay, actually this is kind of good because each each tactic is stronger. But you want an element, I suppose. Uh, so they're all spearmen, skirmishers. All right, we're gonna have to deal with tribal armies for a while here. All right, so we'll have you come down. We'll we'll keep our morale at full, um, just because again I think that our leader will be in charge of the whole stack. Now we do have a second. Um, we have a second uh, alliance slot. We could ally with somebody else too, just to be on the safe side. I really, really want to kill Adania, but the other concern is that we actually, yeah, because what we want to do is is walk over to Tarsa where their armies are going to spawn, and basically have them follow us, or we're going to follow with them because they're going to have the numbers. Us and the Tarsans together is larger than the Adanians by themselves. So we could also ally with someone else just to likely deprive Adenia of an ally. But ultimately I'm worried about them taking the city and sacking it, or also just taking the uh, provincial capital and not giving it to me, which is a serious concern. The Tarsans are kind of, um, uh, what am I trying to say? The Tarsans are kind of in a position where I think we can race them and, and be on the capital at the same time as them. And anyone over here won't be blocked by the fort to get over here. And I can just go around in the uh, uncolonized. I guess they could as well, but the AI doesn't need to think about that. I think we're going to risk it that we only have one ally. Or we could ally with Celia. Celia is outside of all of the provinces that we're currently aiming at. We were aiming at a Linnea, for what that's worth. But they also don't have a high opinion of us, though. Although that doesn't matter too much to them, actually. Yeah, diplomatic relations plus 50. We could ally with these guys. They don't bring in a huge army. Yeah, actually, you know, because they're split... They're Tarsons. They only have 24 Tarsons. That's really not that much, honestly. I don't think Celia is worth it to team up with. But everyone else is in kind of an awkward position. I really want someone who, who's also blocked by the fort. Uh, I guess what I could do is ally with Celia and then keep them as my ally for my follow-up war with Tarsa. Let's let, let me think about this. Okay, making gains gives me... Kizu as the next claim, and I don't need to fight Celia until... Do I ever get a claim on the Celia province? No. Okay, that's fine. That's totally fine. Okay. <sighs> Alright, so now we actually can use our money for a few things. I will keep this on increased pay for the reasons I talked about before. Let me just save my money for now. I may need to hire Mercs as an emergency, but I think we're I think we're looking solid here. God, just partial color blindness. I can never tell what the, the, the uh, speed of that is. All right, I think we're I think it's on speed too. Okay, so I think we're good to go ahead and go here. Got everything set up here. I've got could do a cultural decision. Don't think I need to do that. <laughs> I could grab right of appeal. Uh, the Freeman output, though, could be kind of painful. I don't think I'm going to mess with this at all. Let me just leave it alone. Anything else trade-wise I need to worry about? I don't think so. I think we're fine. I think we're fine. Alright. We are looking good. Let us begin. Oh my gosh. Immediate trade bombardment. Let's trade with the, um, let's trade with the Assyrians. How do we reach these guys? They don't have a... Can we really reach them this far away? I guess it's not that far, actually. So you know what? I'm overreacting. We'll trade with the Assyrians. And then we'll trade the other precious... Because we don't need two precious metals. The citizen bonus. No, not you. The citizen bonus. Oh my god, please. There we go. The citizen happiness bonus isn't a huge deal. We barely have any citizens. Although I guess we do have some citizens. But loyalty is not going to matter in our capital, so yeah, let's trade away the other one. Uh, are you far enough away? Okay, you're definitely far enough away. I'll trade with you. Do we have, do we have more? Oh yeah, we know we have we have three surpluses. That's right. All right. Um, trade with the Assyrians. Yep. All right. Ooh. Damn! Look at that commerce. Holy crap. Two point. We've got a big... January 2nd, 785. We have a larger commerce economy than a tax economy. That is not something you see every day. Wow, that gold is really worth a lot. And keeping it on encouraged trade was definitely the right idea. Okay, we've got ourselves a certified opening build right here. Yes, sir. <laughs> 
All right, so we're going to keep our manpower. I'm not going to do any colonization, although it is tempting. And we're just going to head our way down here. Also keep an eye on everyone's alliances. Make sure no one is getting any funny ideas about teaming up against... Oh, Tarsa just colonized this? All right, whatever. Tarsa. All right. <laughs> that is annoying. Um, I, w I wanted to colonize this, but Tarsa just went for it, so... All right, whatever. We'll just we'll take this from Tarsa in the future. All right, these guys get here February 1st. Actually, this is good because now there's a direct uh, border connection with Tarsa, so they should walk over to me. So I think they will walk over to me. If not, I'll walk down to them. And hopefully we get a, a chance to see the size of the Adenian army as we go. These guys have no other allies. All right, are we trading with these guys? Oh, we're getting our saffron from Tarsa? I just realized that. We, uh, we are. Okay. I, uh, may want to, may want to change that. <laughs> I'm not going to be trading with them for much longer. All right, sounding out the opposition, debate has raged for many years over our rocky relationship with the nation-states resident in West Kizuwatna. Tarsa, a nation many in Padawanda call a friend, which is actually, for once, this event is, tr is correct. Stands well placed to provide us with assistance in our endeavors. To look at look at this lore accurate sounding out the opposition event. You never see this. Usually it picks some random nation you never heard of, but Tarsa is actually an important nation in our geopolitics right now. Anyways, uh, many of our more warlike advisors, however, seem intent on burning all bridges and laying waste to Tarsan lands in an effort to further advance our cause. I'm going to go for Benevolent Image, which I normally would go for anyways, but having the extra dip rep, given my cultural situation, is going to be extra important. I think that is a, uh, that is a sure thing. Alright, here for these guys to arrive. Alright, uh, you attach. Everyone's at full morale, nearly full morale. Alright, Adania, here we go. Tarsa joins in. The worst case scenario would have been if Adania allied with Tarsa, and then I'd be deprived of an ally and they'd gain an enemy. I don't know what I would have... That would have probably been, honestly, a reset if that had happened. But here we are, gonna go to war with Adania. Tarsa joins in. They are super on board with this. And uh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Added, uh, Tarsa joined in. Very good. All right, Tarsa, I need you to do one thing and one thing only, which is to raise your army and move it towards the city of Adenia and let me join you before anything funny happens over there. So I take over the siege. Just to help you, I'm going to come towards your capital so I, my army is protected with your army. What I really want them to do is actually follow my army with their army. That would be super cool if they could do that, because if they completely ignore me and uh, the Adenian army runs up to start sieging Padawanda, could be in trouble, although I will win the siege race because I can assault Adenia without that big penalty. And incidentally, for what it's worth, I think actually the assault penalty in this mod is not large enough to discourage assaulting every so often, so I, w I could have still assaulted anyways. but. Either way, let us see exactly what we're uh, dealing with here. 4.17 gold at the start as a tribe is crazy. I still can't get over that. All right, are you going to raise your your army, or what are you what are you doing here? Where is everybody? Okay, here's the Tarsan army. All right. Okay, that's a good start. It looks like you're heading towards that, and I'm going to come join you. I'm going to try to be there around the same time. Tarsa. Tarsa, what are you doing? Okay, okay, good. Please come and join with me, and then follow me over to Adenia, and then let me do the seat. <sighs> oh, I just about had a heart attack when these guys popped out of the fog of war. Oh my god, all right. We are getting out of the way just in time. That is good. I'm glad I didn't wait any longer. All right. Fourth of March, we're going to see exactly what Tarsa is up to. Please. Okay, that's not... That might be towards the city. Okay, it's the same size of army as well. What's the morale situation? We win on morale, that's good. Tarsa, please. Tarsa, Tarsa, please just... Uh, you know what, in fact... Uh, can I follow Tarsa? I'm gonna follow Tarsa. I think both these guys are gonna follow. Yeah, okay. Let's just follow Tarsa and kind of see where they take me. I hope it's into a fight with these guys, and then we can run over and do the uh, do the siege. In fact, 16th of March, let's see. They're coming back around. Are, are we gonna... Okay, we're gonna do a siege race, I think. Or we're gonna run back and fight the Mentar, so that's totally fine if we do that. 
Where are we going? I think we're going towards Tarsa. All right. I actually, I am. Should I let Tarsa actually just fight this battle and maybe lose? <laughs> How ruthless am I feeling today? The issue is, I'm not sure that that level of ruthlessness is actually safe. That might be a bit too ruthless because Tarsa, I might need Tarsa's support. What I kind of want to do is have someone run over and grab these three tiles. I might literally just send my fastest man, or I guess fastest hundred men, the fourth levy. You're on a special mission. We're doing this. <laughs> We're just gonna go for it. Uh, but I kind of want my my main tribal leader to. Uh, yikes. I guess I could just ignore the city and just get the other two. But that. Uh, you know what? Let me let me do this. Let me do this more intelligently. Okay, we're gonna just play it safe. We're gonna follow... Actually, we're, we're gonna automatically... Yeah, we're gonna follow Tarsa. Or we're not. I guess we're gonna do a siege race after all. Alright, every day we're one thing behind. We actually get there before them. <laughs> Alright, that's fine. If we can just have one day where Tarsa is standing with me on Adania, we can do our assault and use the Tarsan forces using our good uh, assault modifier. At least I think that's how it's gonna work. We're gonna discover in just a second if the assault modifier works the way it seems to work in the UI. And I really hope that is how that works. All right, Tarsa. Tarsa, please just arrive there and don't move for at least one day so I can do my thing. Or right, we've arrived. Okay. Moment of truth. It doesn't say, but I think that seems to be the unmodified number, so I think we're in the clear. Not 100% sure, I have to rewatch the Domestat campaign to see what it looked like over there. But I think we have the full assault, and also the- okay, you know what? Their garrison's not at full power, I don't know what they're doing lowering their garrison when the game begins, but okay. We would win this anyways, but we're gonna take so few losses, I, I think. We'll find out. I'm in charge, that is 100% for sure the case. We're gonna take it over, that's our flag over there, that's me, so. Shouldn't be any funny business from this. Order the actually, yeah, order the assault with everybody here. No, I, no goofing around. Okay, sacking of Adania. Uh, Ugaris Chelvasid has led his men to glorious victory during the siege of Adania. The enemy flee in disgrace, and all that is left is to decide on how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, these spoils of war likely cause those back in Padawanda to admire Ugaris greatly, but leaving such wealth in the hands of one man could cause problems in the future. So, there is a, a balance to be struck here between making the people here super mad and killing them so that their anger doesn't matter anymore because then they're dead. It's just, it's just how it is, you know? So, I think going for the Nunchill Hide is called for getting cruel. I didn't even look at his, his traits or anything. Whoops, I totally forgot to do that. Or his family. Got a wife and a, a daughter named Tamar. We'll take a look at that in just a sec here. But I think cruel would be fine. Lowering charisma is not a huge deal. Enslavement efficiency might actually be kind of good. Local slave output as governor for our capital province is crazy. And the monthly tyranny is completely fine. We have a very, very good tyranny reduction thanks to his charisma. So I think Nunchal Hide is completely fine. Levy is loyal to the tribal chief is not a problem at all. And he gets some more popularity. Nunchal Hide. We killed one pop and sent one to Padawanda. All right, good. You're going to run back over. Ooh, your low morale could be a problem. Actually, my low morale could also be... I'm a bit worried about this fight coming up here, if we do fight them right away. Can you not do that, Tarsa, perhaps? Hmm, perhaps? All right, you know what? I'm going to let Tarsa do whatever they want to do. I'm going to run and go grab this stuff. I think now that I've gotten the fort here, I feel a bit more confident being a bit more ruthless. We already have a hundred of our men in the fort. I don't think... I think Tarsa will block them long enough with a failed battle, uh, for Tarsa's point of view, so that they don't get here before the... Oh yeah, monthly tick is... Oh, that's perfect timing. Monthly tick is coming right up. We're gonna get our recovery of our garrison right away. Alright. Time to leave the Tarsans behind and, uh, run our way westward. We're gonna have... Uh, we're gonna do this as quickly as possible. You split... Actually, we need we need a hundred, so never mind. We need to keep you two together. You go over here, and you come over and sack uh, Sue. I need to depopulate as much as I can before I move in here. Alright, meanwhile... Um, what was I going to do? I think this all looks fine. Alright. Oh yeah, I was going to look at my character. Alright, so Ugaris Chelvisid 9585 now. 
He is Reckless, 1 extra martial, and War Score cost reduction 5%, but also AE impact 10%, more likely to engage in theft and pit fighting. Aggressive, martial plus 1. Spearman discipline and Chariot discipline, that's pretty good because our levy composition is, uh, well, I guess it's actually only Chariot, so there's no Spearman, never mind. Um, and Cruel now, which we've talked about before. Oh, you know what? I did not do Scheme Influence. Whoops, that was a few months of missing out. I guess I got a bit more monthly wealth for him, but the corruption was probably not worth it. Let me switch over to Scheme Influence. Wow, throwing already <laughs> a misadventurer. St this is a common misadventurer L right here, but you know what? Things are off to a pretty good start, even with my, my minor mistakes. My micro mistakes. Let me get the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the terminology right. Also, I think I can probably justify lowering morale now. Probably. I sh what I really should do is stay with Tarsa, because I'm worried they're not going to win this fight. If they do have more martial, morale is similar. Uh, depends on where the fight happens as well. If it's in the hills and they're defending, it might be fine. If I stay with them, my numbers and my martial will probably mean they win. But then I can't guarantee getting here before they get here. I kind of don't mind if Tarsa loses a bunch of forces. Although the war score... Oh, you know what? The issue is the war score is going to affect me. You know what? Okay, you know what? We're going to stay with Tarsa. Yeah. We actually see where they're moving to now. So, unless Tarsa ignores this army, in which case we kind of do need to, to change our plans a bit, but just to be... Just until they recover their morale a little bit, I think we need to stay with Tarsa. Okay. Let us uh, proceed here. Alright, what's the garrison at now? 110, alright, good. Keep it moving. Look up April. Matter of West Kizuwatna. The region of West Kizuwatna has remained a valuable source of trade and commerce for our nation for many long years. Many amongst the clan council insist that such a bountiful land would serve much better purpose if fully integrated under the Paduandian banner. Of course, as with all matters of state, many are in opposition claiming that a healthy relationship with our neighbors is far more important than a wanton land grab. The leaders of each side have pres presented their arguments and asked for an arbitration as to which method would be more appropriate in our dealings with the various states resident in West Kizuwatna. We long for friendship and cooperation. Looks like the apothecary gets mad. Sucks to suck. This guy doesn't know about the overpowered uh, benevolence tree or benevolence uh, path. Okay, this guy is going to come up towards us. He's going to catch us, though. Oh, he's definitely going to catch us. He's going to catch us in the hills. No, no, we're going to... Oh, yeah, 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 he is, he is. Because we're going to get there. Let's see if the Tarsons stop moving. No, they're going to keep moving. All right, this is fine. We get here first. We're back up to basically full, nearly full morale. Yeah, I think this is fine. What is... What is Adania doing? Why is the AI doing this? I mean, it may just be usual AI tomfoolery, but this is an unusually bad move by the AI. I don't know why they think this is a good... They're attacking into hills. We're defending in hills. We have higher martial. We've got five higher martial. We have higher... Maybe their total morale is better than our total morale? I don't think so. I think our total morale is similar or higher. I guess we'll see what happens. I'm, I just... I don't know what to make of this, but this is fine. Uh, and once this battle is... Oh, they changed. Okay, never mind. Can you, can you turn around? I, w I want us to fight these guys. Oh my gosh. Where, where are we going? Where is this guy taking us? Going on a magical journey. Like where, where are we headed? Can we turn around and fight these guys? What are we doing over here? Okay, there we go. Goddamn Tarsa. All right. Uh, that's not a lot of soldiers, but I don't think he's going to do an assault. I don't think the AI is that smart. He could easily take it back with an assault, though. Just don't instantly siege it, please. Oh, uh, I really don't want to be this far ahead of this guy. I'm moving much faster because his army is uh, slower. It's got um, it's got more units and it's got heavier units. Although I do have spearmen, I guess. Wait a minute, hold on. I have spearmen. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um, hold on. Chariot skirmishers, heavy chariots, and axemen. How do I have... Uh, what? 
Okay, you know what? This Bronze Age weirdness. I don't know what's going on. Alright. Tarsa? 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 Oh, Tarsa, stop. Stop it. <laughs> Fine, I'll do it myself. I need to I need to coax Tarsa into following me. Okay, I think they're I think they're attached to me. I'm gonna drag Tarsa into this fight. We're gonna be defending in farmland, they should be completely fine, assuming they don't take it back in one siege tick. Just knowing my luck is probably what's going to happen. Tarsa, that's the wrong way. T Tarsa, where are you going? Literal worst possible direction. Tarsa, <laughs> Tarsa, I swear to God, please. The game thinks we're still going to win this, actually, so I, I I don't... Okay, Tarsa can actually join in from over here. I, I really need to hope Tarsa joins in. That's really my only hope here. They're going to get their... Okay, these guys are actually running. Now I can't back out anyways. We just have to see what happens. We have to see what happens. Tarsa, please. Tarsa, Tarsa, please turn around and come south and join me in the battle. Okay. 13th of June, that's a long ways away. We're defending. Morale's higher. We've got half their numbers. Oh my god, the fucking roll. Six. Six roll. Holy shit. Imperator Rome making up for all those years of fucking torture that inflicted on me for all these goddamn rolls. Alright. Well, that's not gonna save us, but it is gonna prolong things. Tarsa, please. Please, 13th of June. Oh, come on, a few more days. Oh, no, we're so close. No. Oh. Oh, I, I don't, yeah. I'm going to retreat up here, and then Tarsa's gonna hit them here and defeat them in the battle. Okay, Tarsa hits them now. Tarsa should beat them. Tar Tarsa... If you lose this battle, I'm going to... I, I don't know, I'm going to be mildly upset. <laughs> it's realistically... No, they're not going to lose. Good job, Tarsa. I should have actually gone to this tile. I would have finished retreating faster. Okay, now Tarsa's going to return to standing over here weirdly. That's totally fine. I need Tarsa not to take this stuff. That's the main thing that I care about right now. Then we're going to be in the clear. Although they're going to finish retreating over there. Uh, Alright, um... Who else is Tarsa? Tarsa has no other allies. Okay, good. Good, good, good. You get up here and finish retreating. And then we're going to run through the uncolonized to go grab this stuff. Although I'm nervous without Tarsa's help. We're not going to be able to beat their army. I might want to wait, actually, and recover my morale until they're re-sieging here. That's probably what I want to do. That is probably what I want to do. Alright, um... Reorganize up here. Let's get your morale back. Tarsa, you're allowed to come join me if you like. It's totally fine. Let me turn on attachment for both my guys. Okay, I think they're going to come join me. The Tarsan AI is doing the right thing of trying to stick with me. It knows that that is the correct decision, which is the case. I completely agree with that assessment. But okay, never mind. They're going to just... Where are they going? Tarsa. That city is for me. Uh, I don't want to... There's going to be the armies recovering right over there. I don't want to run into the army. Tarsa. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Um, okay, you know what? Okay, I have to risk it. I need to be here on this tile when it's sieged. And if Tarsa starts the siege, I can catch up with them. We've got to just run. We can't We can't afford to miss out on the sack. <sighs> All right, Tarsa. Okay, Tarsa's going to come join me. That's... Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. Good, good, good. All right. Everyone come here. Wait for Tarsa to join. 31st. Oh, hello, Adonia. Oh, Tarsa's not joining. Okay. I guess we're going to follow Tarsa? Oh, boy. All right. <laughs> the joys of tribal tribal chiefdom warfare. Gotta love it. All right. Um, where, where the hell? All right. I think everyone's heading towards Simisue. We need to be there. Or be square. Ooh, I don't like the look at this. Okay, six. This guy can also assume control. I'm gonna have you head this direction. I'll have my other guy head to here. I'm gonna hope Adonia is genuinely going. Okay, they can come sack this stuff. It's completely fine. Just, uh, no funny business, please. We have a son named uh, Mago Chelbasid. Alright. 
Didn't know my wife was pregnant, but I guess that's pretty cool. Alright. We should assume control with our higher marshal guy up here. Please arrive. Oh my god, how long is it going to be? Seven of October. Oh my god. The slowest man in the world, please. Come on. Come on. Yes! <laughs> Fuck you, Tarsa. That's, that belongs to me. Fuck you. <laughs> That's mine. All right. Um, I'm a bit worried about getting... Oh no, I can just... I, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll have time. I just have to stand there before it completes. So I think we've dodged a bullet here. So this will go to me. Okay, good. That went to me. That's a good start. You, now, follow him over here. Don't let him get that. Once we get all these uh, spots here, we should be able to win the war and get what we want. So that will be perfect. Continue along. <sighs> I may just actually keep Tarsa as my ally and just go into another war right away while we're over here. That might not be the worst idea. Once we finish getting everything, we'll see exactly what the situation is. Alright, um, I'm not going to read this event every time. I did that before, but uh, that would be a bit much. Alright, let's kill as many as we can here. We'll make this easier for us later. Again, with everyone being a wrong culture group for us, uh, we have really no incentive to ever keep anyone alive. Like, lowering population numbers is always going to be best for us. None shall hide. Absolutely obliterate it. You come over here and join in. Then we'll get this spot here. And we'll... Where is this guy going? Going on a journey in the marshlands? What is this? Where's, where's he going to? Like, what, what's over there? It's gonna... Okay, I don't know what's going on. Um, <laughs> you'll be shocked to hear I find the Imperator Room AI. A little confusing. Okay, so he's just going around for some reason. To the scenic route. If you say so. Alright. That is the entirety of this land occupied. We are going to be taking everything... And Tarsa gets exactly nothing. <laughs> All right, um, this is the deal we want. Eleven AE more from being our from being the current character that we are for the tribal chief. That sh oh wow. Oh yeah, we're currently at war. Never mind. I was about to say minus point oh three only as our AE loss per month. That's pretty low, but it's because we're at war. Okay, that's fine. All right, so Adenian, Adenia to Padawanda. Adenian Samura to Padawanda, Adenian Kizu to Padawanda, and Adenian Watna to Padawanda. And we also tag delete uh, Adenia, which means that we're going to be able to sell their nobles into slavery, which given our zero current tyranny is completely feasible and will improve our economy even more. I'm gonna reinvest this money into our mountain strongholds up here. And also probably need to set this, I kinda wanna get this onto the, um, cause I've got the religion idea, don't I? Yeah. I need to start doing conversion uh, and taking advantage of that as soon as I can. All right, let me open up this peace deal again. All right, this is the deal that I want. All right, the Adenian elite. After a protracted conquest, we have finally routed the Adenian armies and laid waste to their lands. During the sacking of their capital, many uh, important prisoners were taken, many of them having previously held important positions in the Adenian court. They now languish in our dungeons. Awaiting whatever fate we decide to impose upon them. All right, let's go ahead and imprison their uh, leaders. Let the rest disappear. That's fine. I don't think I need to lose any AE that badly, although... Is it really only... Wow, okay. I may, I may have some AE problems, actually. Yikes, all right. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, but I need the money. Imprison their leaders. Let the rest disappear. That's fine. There's the peace deal. All right, let's let one day go by. Okay, here is the question. Do I immediately go to war again? And with whom would I go to war with? Okay, I don't have a claim on you. Why is that? Oh, I, yeah, that's right. I don't have... Yeah. <laughs> oh, I haven't even finished Consult the Clan Council yet. <laughs> okay, that's what I was about to say. Where's my, where's my mission? Um, actually, hold on. Oh, it's, uh, I need to, oh yeah, I actually need to fight Tarsa to get the Adenia. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, oh, I have, uh, I now have the East, uh, right. I forgot about that. Well, since my governors as a tribe don't join in the army, I can just pick someone for finesse. I guess Hanno Barca. This guy looks promising. What's his loyalty like? He'll, revoked offices will go away. 
Uh, this might be good, actually. Well, no, as governor, that's good. Yeah, state religion happens. All right, let me, let me throw this guy in here. Hanno Barca. 44 is fine. What do we have here? These guys will all hurry in. Uh, I think I'll just leave this because it has will affect so few people. Actually, what I should do... Oh, 1.09. Holy fucking Christ. All right, you know what? This needs to go immediately onto local autonomy. Or maybe even onto harsh treatment. I think I need to go to local autonomy. No, it's not. Ooh, wow. Wow, that's a lot. Oh, my gosh. All right. Um... Oh, can I can I justify not doing harsh treatment? I don't know about that. <laughs> I think I need to go to harsh treatment. I think I need to, to move all the slaves out and then also have it on harsh treatment. Oh, it's not going to be enough, is it? How much will I get here for the non-slaves? And this is just... Okay, so it's five freemen. 12.50... Okay, it, the slave isn't actually doing a huge amount of damage here. Yikes, all right. I'm, I'm scared to look at the other province, too. This is just the one province with the one spot. Oh, man, all right. Um, I have a lot of PI to work with, but I gotta, I gotta fix this somehow. Uh, I think I need to go to harsh treatment, and then it's gonna get better over time. I hope. <laughs> Can I build anything to help here? I need Freeman happiness is what I really need right here. Well, I guess I guess some of them might demote, but Freeman they won't demote, they won't uh, demote too much. Maybe a little bit of demotion. We'll just have to wait. All right. Um, actually, I guess there's a couple different provinces here. I got the cap or whatever. Worry about that later. Um, also, did I? Oh, I didn't... I forgot to change... I wanted to change this loyalty cost to be 5. I forgot to do that. Whatever. It is what it is. Um, okay. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, I, oh, I, I, gotta, I gotta convert these guys. I mean, that's a good start. What's the conversion rate? Oh, it's not gonna say until next month. We'll just cross our fingers. The conversion rate is nice and, and brisk. Okay, that's a bit better. Oh, okay, that's actually not so bad. That one's not so bad. Okay, these guys all need to be converted. Oh man, all right, that's that's pretty brutal. I think it's time for some civil rights for the Adenians. What do you think, folks? Actually, I don't want to go below twenty stability, so never mind. It is not time for civil rights for the Adenians. Yikes. Okay, we are going to have some population happiness problems in this campaign. <laughs> That wasn't clear already. Okay, so putting that aside, um, who else do we have claims on at this stage? We have we have claims on nobody at this stage. That's right. We need to wait. We need to wait for January first. Um, actually, if we lowered our army, we'd only raise back up three because of the happiness situation. Let's keep our army raised. Definitely don't want to risk that. Definitely don't want to risk that. All right. Um. Who's our next target going to be then? Let me think about this. Claims wise, so the Adonia claim would only give us a claim on Tarsa, who obviously Tarsa won't help us fight, needless to say. And then Lamia. That's, that's, that's barely. I guess this gives us a claim on Celia, but we don't border them, so can we take their land? Is it close enough? Don't we have to have a land connection or a sea connection to take it? I don't think it counts going over uncolonized. That's going to be so awkward. Okay, we're basically not going to get claims on anybody. We basically have to fight Tarsa next, so that's pretty awkward. The problem is, with our new population, this isn't going to act... Or that's not our population. Our new population is overwhelmingly not of Hattie culture. I guess we could integrate the Ad Adenians, but I don't think that's going to be a good long-term plan. I want to assimilate them. I think we should fight a... Hmm. Let me think about this. If we colonize Silver Mountain, we get a Samura claim. That gives us a war with the um, Sawairi. This is a weaker nation. We can take these guys on by ourselves, I think. A nine marshal, though. We could get mercs. That would solve it. My, my main force with mercs would beat this guy, even with his marshal. Okay, yeah. I think that's the plan. I think what we do then is we go ahead and... 
Yeah, let's go ahead and lower our forces. Actually, we get we get a. Okay, interesting. We actually have our proper levy composition now. Weird. Maybe it was glitched out before. Chariots and heavy chariots. These guys are pretty good though. Do these folks here have chariots in their levy composition? No, they don't, actually. We're bringing in chariots from northern Anatolia, or central Anatolia. Okay, we're going to have a military advantage. Chariots are pretty strong, and the folks around here wouldn't normally have chariots. Okay, that is a... Uh, that is pretty good. Alright, let's lower fort maintenance. Do all the usual post-war activities. This fort is definitely staying here, and I probably want to move the capital back over. Uh, the loyalty situation is going to be painful, but I need the... I need this to be fortified. I guess the thing is I can move it right before the war. Just to... Uh, I should make this the capital. I think this is probably going to be the capital. Unless we make a, a, a coastal spot the capital later. So let me move the capital back over. The 20 loyalty is painful. It is painful, it's true. Alright, this city here, I'm going to keep as a city. I'm going to be much less aggressive about demoting cities in good spots. And any kind of farmland location is a good spot for a city. Even other locations like hills can be fine, so compared to the previous campaigns, I'm not going to demote cities nearly as often. Or I'll try not to, because the cities are pretty valuable. So I think what we'll do now is start just uh, accumulating the manpower that we need to do our colonizations, and that's basically going to be our focus for now. And yeah, otherwise we'll just be uh, focusing on us, uh, converting these folks. Okay. There we go. And we probably have some more resources to sell. We have some extra livestock and extra livestock up here as well. Okay. So once we get the monthly tick, we're going to have some more trade offers, most assumedly. I guess we'll see. No, we just have a food supply warning. Great. Love that for me. Here comes the winter. I do like the unique uh, building design of our culture. It's different from the local tribal style building. What? <laughs> Tarsa insulted me? What the fuck is this? I've never seen the AI insult me. That's really rare at least. Your eagle has two heads but not even one crown. <laughs> Tarsa! You piece of shit! What the fuck is this? Alright. Fuck you. <laughs> what? Are you serious? Oh wow. Okay, Tarsa really... Okay. I mean, I'm going to get a Cass's Belly on them anyways, but this was a really boneheaded move by Tarsa. I guess in fairness, looking at the situation, they kind of have a good reason to assault me. I did just kind of steal all this land that they might have wanted to take, but... Alright, I could dissolve my lands with Tarsa. Honestly, they've, they're only going to have, you know, 70-ish Tarsans. Well, 80-ish. 80, 80 yeah, eight, around 78 Tarsans. I only have about 23 hotties, but I will be able to get mercs. Although, the, these numbers... It's going to be a similar number situation. I need an, another ally to help me fight Tarsa. I guess I could... You know what? Um, oh, hold on, wait. My alliance with them... No, I'm still allied with them. I'm just going to let them break the alliance. You know, if you want to get break the alliance, you get the ceasefire. I guess we both get it, but I want them to break the alliance. I'll wait and see what they do. But I'm going to make them do it. It's the least that they deserve. I could build some buildings up here, but I, I want to save my money for now in case I need to get mercs. I might need to get more than one merc force as well. The clan council speaks. Red Orc and Vate have raged for a full year. The clan council of Padawanda has reached a final stance on the matter of West Kizuwatna. Drawing a sharp breath, the Herald recites, Protect the weak of West Kizuwatna. <laughs> Don't check to see what we've been up to. Just assume this is the plan. <laughs> no, one, no one checked to see what we've been up to recently, but... All right, um, dip rep and opinion maximum. All right, that's fine. Okay, so at this point, yeah, I think we just focus on colonizing. I want to colonize this. Actually, let me think about this. What am I, what do I want to colonize? Yeah, then we'd be able to sell some livestock. Actually, resource-wise, which of these is the best? I, actually, I might want to colonize this first to get the local effect of limestone. I'm not going to lie. All right. It's going to take a while to get the manpower, though. Here. Definitely going to take a while. In the meantime, we've got this border war situation, but it is what it is. Let's 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 see who Tarsa allies with as well. They ally with somebody else. We shall see. Again? Oh my god. This needs to pause my game and it pops up here. A second Tarsa insult? May you live a thousand lives without joy. Wow. Double insult by Tarsa. <laughs> 
What the fuck is this? Tarsa, calm the hell down. They're gonna break the alliance. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I think if they break the alliance, do I get a truce with them or do they just get a truce with me? Because if I don't get a truce with them, that's amazing. If they, if the Tarsa, okay, this is a new level of Tarsa AI stupidity if this is what's happening. If they break the alliance and it doesn't give me a truce, and I don't remember what happens with that, I think that would mean that Tarsa fumbled the war and then fumbled the alliance by, by insulting me twice, causing them to lose opinion with me. Um, I guess I have low opinion with them as well. Um, they are planning to declare war on you, your ally, or your league member. I guess it is hard AI, so the AI is a bit more bloodthirsty, so I shouldn't overlook that. I probably need to be a bit careful about Tarsa, because they are stronger than me, and I well, I guess I could raise my army right away if they, they do attack me. Three units only, led by nine. They're still led by five. I might want to hire some mercs preemptively, although... If they break the alliance, declaring war would would cause would cost super high stability. I don't know if they're that bloodthirsty. Does the AI actually go to war after breaking alliance on hard normally? I don't know about that. I guess we'll see. If Tarsa breaks it, I don't know if I get a truce with them. Because if they get a truce with me, I don't think they'll break the truce, but they'll attack as soon as it's done. But if I don't get a truce with them, I could basically attack them at will. Where the hell are they? Where the hell are they going? Okay, I don't know what to make of this. The tin trade. Regarding the tin trade, things could be better, but they could certainly be worse. We aren't making any money, but we aren't necessarily losing any either. Depending on how the merchants like their respective trading post, lapis lazuli may now be imported there in increased or decreased quantities. The tin trade as a whole remains strong. Did someone say lapis? Any uh, any lapis? Lapis traders in my nation? I wouldn't mind some lapis. Okay, I can't see any lapis. That's a sh Oh, hold on, wait. I oh, know I can't see it there either. Never mind. Hmm. Okay. Very interesting. They're keeping their army raised, which I'm a little nervous about. Don't like that so much. Definitely. But you know what? I forgot to, uh, forgot to sell my slave. Let me do that in a bit. Inspirational neighbors. Our interactions with our neighbor Tarsa has shown us how they're... Why, every single event I'm getting in this campaign is Tarsa related. Anyways, um, have shown us how their bu bureaucracy and administrative tools work and in what ways it differs to our own. By introducing some of their customs into our system, we are certain to be able to centralize authority and have more control over our clan chiefs. A group opposing these changes is led by Philisir Ugarid, my clan chief, 77 Loyalty as it seems he and his followers know how it would affect their authority if the changes were brought into Padawanda. Okay, so we gain 0.50 centralization right away, which is a nice boost. There's about a year of centralization, or a little bit more than that. But then we also gain a very, very strong 0.03 centralization monthly. That's nearly, that's like 60% the value of our current centralization just by itself, and that's for 60 months regardless of what happens later on with Tarsa. Cost us some gold, cost us some PI, that's fine. Lose some prominence and loyalty on the chief, that, that's fine. I think that's fine. I don't want to lose the centralization either. Let's go ahead with these ideas. All right. Okay. And then, let's see here. Do have a couple slaves up here now. What's the pop assimilation rate? It's faster than normal because of that bonus from Hattie and Heritage. I, uh, I don't really want to lose the commerce. I have so much commerce value because of that gold trade. I sort of don't want to lose the commerce value. Let's see. Okay, this is fairly brisk for a tribe. The tribes are going to struggle to assimilate people fast, but or to convert people fast, or assimilate people fast, but it's uh, the best we can do. Okay. It's not very good. It's not very good. Save my money. Tarsus is keeping their army raised still. Don't like that so much. How's my score doing? I, I am number... What, what number is this? 496? Oh my god, alright. Yeah, I probably shouldn't be... Probably shouldn't be too, uh, be too surprised about that. Alright. 
Let's see if they dissolve the alliance or not. Army's ready again, nearly. Rival at court lately, our tribal chief, Ugarist uh, Chelbasid, has come into conflict with Hanno Barca. At every turn and decision, this is the governor of uh, the, the governor rivalry. <sighs> Their opinions persistently clashing. If one of them says south, the other will promptly say north. If one of them wants to trade with the neighbor, the other will argue for war. This constant bickering is ruining whatever authority Ugarus used to have. The atmosphere in Padawanda is at a breaking point. I'm not going to rival the goddamn governor. I'll never be able to get rid of him then. It's one of my few good finesse characters. Fine, have it your way. I'll lose popularity. Cut it out. Stop trying to rival the governor. Freaking moron. All right. All right, so let's proceed. This is gonna be brutal. This is going to be brutal. We could do some, oh, I need um, civil rights now, or that's not the right thing. Here it is. Um, this could help, this could definitely help. Uh, I think protection against torture is the good first one. Cause then we get culture happiness 6%. And we get some loyalty boosts right away. All those loyalty boosts are not wasted, so that's good. Um, I think this is worth it. Loyalty is going to always improve slightly, so I think it's better to get the boost earlier when the, the downward trend is more severe, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. The uh, um, the uh, the Hatians are going to be mad about this, but that's fine. All right. No more torturing the Adonians. They have uh, been through it enough. All right, um, loyal or er, stability needs to go up quick to fix that, but it will progress up at a brisk pace. Given that I stabbed the pig earlier, we may not be able to expand very quickly given the happiness situation. But this will hopefully keep things under control more or less. Let's go to the monthly tick. How things are looking? May have a big rebellion on my hands if I'm not careful. Uh, let's see. I could build a theater as well to help with assimilation. I will want to do that eventually. Is there a, a temple? Yeah, there is. I could build the temple. I might want to build the temple in the city, to be honest. There's only a few pops here. The pops here are really dispersed around the whole area. You know what? Let me actually... Oh, Alright, you know what? It's worth it to do this. Let me go ahead. First time... Never mind. I can't do it because there's not enough vegetable traders. Oh, you know what? I can get Saffron Surplus now. Oh, but it's with Tars. Oh, you know what? Whatever. I don't care. I've got Saffron Surplus, Ruler Pop Gain, plus 0.05, and it's 20% slave output. And then on top of that, let me just... I'll just spend the money. Fuck it. I don't have vegetables accessible. Let's bring in all the slaves that we can from all over the place here. Uh, five per is so expensive, but this is worth it to help with the loyalty situation. This is going to really make a big difference. Every every slave from everywhere in this whole area, we're just shipping them all up into the silver mines where their unhappiness won't affect loyalty because loyalty is 100 up there. And they're going to be really productive as well. Alright, that's this entire province. Then all of them move in here from uh, Tewena. Uh, Alright. I think I may move some tribes in by accident, but... That is fine, and then all of them move up here. We've got plenty of capacity, and we're going to get big uh, pr uh, slave output bonuses. This is a great solution. It won't fix everything, but it's a good starting point. All right, now let's move, with the remaining money that we do have, move as many slaves as we can out of this area. It's going to help with the slaves. Unhappiness isn't going to make a huge difference, but it will help to do it like this. One. I can also do it like this. Two. And then this, these two slaves over here. That's. I should I should try. All right now with my little bit of money that I have left. Now I'm in the danger zone because I can't hire mercs anymore. So that could be bad. But I need to get the happiness under control. I'm, I'm hoping that Tarsa doesn't do anything goofy here. I, I should ally with somebody else ahead of a possible Tarsan 
attack. That's probably the safe bet. That is probably the safe bet. All right, everyone here now has to go through. Uh, has to go through a couple layers. All right, just try your best to get everyone out of the. Park. Even if we just have to put them in coolite, that's still better because then their happiness doesn't matter. Okay, we're not going to be able to... Oh, that's not great. This is not a great spot for them to be stuck in, but... Okay, that's fine. We'll be able to move them into Kulite uh, month by month and get them up here, where they're going to be producing me a lot of tax money. We have some food... Ooh, yikes, we do have some food problems. I might need to trade for... Oh, you know what? Oh, we're in June. Summer shouldn't be a, a low food area. So livestock is good. I want to keep the saffron though. I am greedy, a greedy boy. All right. Um, how's it looking now? Okay, things are getting better. Things are things are getting better without those slaves there. That's good. War in the land of tin. Lands of tin. The tin trade has slowed to a trickle, and Ugaris Chelbasid has demanded to know the reason for the unexpected delays in shipping. Our scouts report that a great war is taking place in the distant lands where tin is found. It is said that there is a man, a general, who leads slaves, who seeks to build a kingdom for himself by seizing the tin mines. Until this calamity is resolved, we will have to deal with the repercussions ourselves. Uh, we should try to mediate? I don't think we're in much of a position to do any mediating. We're barely keeping our, our stuff together as it is. What an unpleasant surprise. I'm not going to try to get involved in whatever's going on. I mean... I don't know how this event works. I'm scared of the event ending up needing me to do something with my very, very small army or resources. I just am not in a position. I'm going to... Out of an abundance of caution, I'm going to keep out of it for now. As, at least I assume that's how that works. Maybe neither does anything. It's all kind of a psychological thing. It could be the case. It could be the case. All right. And... I just need to get back up to 25 to give these guys more civil rights. That might have to happen. Which one's next? Probably right of inheritance. Probably right of inheritance is next. Oh boy. This is going to be fun. Broke the alliance with us. Okay, and this needs to pause my game. What is... Why is this not set? Alright. Okay, what's happening now? One directional truce. Okay, Tarsa. I, I, I can't. This is this perhaps the stupidest AI like in one episode of my one of my campaigns. Like, I can't begin to explain how stupid the Tarsa AI behaved in this entire episode. First of all, they chose to ally with me, which was their first and biggest mistake. Second of all, all of their military movements made no sense, and we saw from the way they moved around with my army following what their movements were. Third of all, after I was a co-belligerent in a war, which normally results in very good relationships, they insulted me twice and then waited a year and then broke their alliance with me, giving themselves a truce with me for a full, what is this, six years? Actually, I think it's like six and a half years, or six and a quarter years, and I have no truce with them. Literal... Like, every single decision that they made was the worst decision. What they should have done is kept their alliance with me, consolidated their power with the other uh, Tarsan populations around them, and then fought me later when I ultimately broke my truce with them, because my mission tree points me in the direction of this land. So, I just... I don't, I don't even know how to begin to explain how bewildering the Tarsa AI has been. But, okay, whatever. They've got a truce with me. They would take a big stability hit. I don't think even the hard AI is comfortable taking a stab hit like that for attacking with the truce. I guess we'll see if that's what happens. Um, I do have a fourth uh, cohort now, so that's really good. How do I have a fourth cohort now? I don't have any idea, because I still have only 23 hottie, but okay, sure. I'll take it. Maybe my population's happier now. I don't know what's going on. I don't have any idea what to make of it. No idea. All right, let me start moving some more population out of here. Things are also calming down quite a bit, which is great. Let's keep moving the slaves. Actually, can I trade for vegetables yet? Let me just check. Cancel the sheep. I'm worried Tarso won't trade with me again. All right, now we're fine. Actually, instead of sheep, let me trade for grain for more food. Trade with the Syrians, sure. All right. Um, getting into the harvest season, so I hope we start harvesting some food now. All right, bring them over from Massey. 
Oh, that's it. Okay. Well, 4.44, that's pretty good. Okay. Um, looking fine. Getting these guys, because we'll also very soon be able to get another copy of gold from all the slaves here, which will be great. You know what? Actually, let me go ahead and disallow slave promotion up here. And also up here. The tin spot will allow it, because I'll never be able to put lots of slaves in to get more tin because of the uh, the tin import thing, so that's fine. What about these spots? I'll worry about that later. <sighs> okay. Alright. War exhaustion is almost back down to zero. Next monthly tick tier. Oh, totally forgot about the, the guys that are in prison. This will make me some money. Completely forgot about this. Whoops. <laughs> Throwing. <laughs> what can I tell you? Release. How much are you worth? 550. That's a sale. Seven. I don't have any tyranny. I'll, I'll go a little on the edge here. Release the baby. Oh my gosh, definitely sell you. Uh, oh, 15, 15, well, holy crap. Why are you worth so much? Okay, I don't know what's going on, but I will not. 12 as well, that, that's pretty, I should have sold these guys a minute ago. Made some serious bank from that. Now I can, I can use the money from selling these human beings to then move more slaves into the mines, he says, sinisterly. <laughs> Ugh, hopefully no one takes what I say here out of context, that would be bad. <laughs> All right, um, I want to move from Massey. The rest of these Hurrian Adonians. All right, and then move a few more in here. There's our, let me just move two, let me move one more to be saved, then I'll move the rest into Kule. Start building up towards an extra copy of Precious Metals up here as well. That's it, all right, there we go. That oddly made things worse here. Th the loyalty fluctuates quite a bit. Oh my... Really? Holy crap. How much corruption does this guy have? Exploiting extraordinary territories. Ugh, please stop. Uh, why? Stop extorting territories. Do something else, please. That was five. Uh, this corruption gain is extreme. I gotta tell him to stop. I'm spending the PI. Cut it out. Do something else. Stop extorting the territories. Please. All right, we'll Tarsa ally with somebody else. This guys are fighting Maluma. All right, who's going to win that? Uh, hold on. Actually, 24 versus... Oh my god, Tarsans? This is a Tarsan state? Oh god, look at this population. Tarsan minority. Okay, I think Siakiga Sia probably is going to win that one. I guess we'll see what happens. If I allied with these guys, would they call me in? I might be able to pull something off kind of cheesy here. Or pull off something kind of cheesy. I guess I don't have a claim. But if they call me in, I don't need a claim. It's not going to be good for the war. Uh, aggressive expansion, but could be done. But then the risk is, if I ally with these guys, that they don't call me into this war and they call me into a different war that I don't want to be called into. It's just one versus one, right? I think it is. That being said, how confident... You know what? Actually, numbers-wise, I should be okay. I think my four... Oh, I got three now. God damn it. I should have raised my four. I'm not, now I'm not sure I can join safely. I mean, nine marshal, what do you have? Eight marshal, okay. Eh. Oh my god, yeah, zero marshal, yikes. I have to basically link up with the Malumans. I don't know, are they under siege yet? What's happening here? No, what about you? Nope, no sieging. When was this war declared? It doesn't say. It's a risk. I mean, Maluma is not a bad ally for me anyways, because um, they're... Okay, they're partially in the Kizu province. Do I get a claim on that? Yeah, I do. For finishing off um, the Adenia province. 
Uh, I think I think these guys are not an early priority for me. They're kind of out of the way. But then the problem is then I uh, make Simisue vulnerable to an attack from these guys if their army is still in the north. I sort of don't know where their army is. That's not good. I mean, the plus side is they could kill some of the population here, which would actually improve the situation. If they could actually specifically kill the people over here, that'd be the best. <laughs> that would be the, the best case scenario. Okay, this is dire. Um, I mean, these guys aren't going to help me that much against Tarsa is the other problem, so they're not really a helpful ally long term. You know what I should do as well? I should change my stance. I do have a much cheaper stance changes now. I should change to mercantile stance. I would make a lot of money doing that. I should have done that earlier, actually. I should have prioritized that. Another micro mistake. I don't need two slots. Let's just wait. I don't know what to make of this. Um, I think Maluma is going to lose this war too much for me to justify coming in. But then again, I guess I could justify coming in. I mean, I don't have the numbers to successfully assault ICA with just my army. I wouldn't really need mercs, and I can't afford mercs, so never mind. I need to make, take advantage of my good assault power when I'm able to do an assault. And these guys will barely have... They might have one cohort, maybe maybe just the one. I don't think it's going to go well for them. I think they're going to lose the war, ultimately. Let's just wait. I need to rebuild up my treasury, get my uh, get my cohorts... Or get my, uh, my mercs and whatnot. Alright, this is fine, because loyalty here is permanent. Come on, please. <laughs> I could improve this quite a bit by switching these down to be local autonomy or harsh treatment. But I really want to convert. I really, really want to convert. It's gonna it's gonna be a good starting point. Conversion speed pretty brisk. I could just cut my losses, switch it over to local autonomy, and switch the idea to something else. How much is this? Five PI. But if I switch to oratory, I, I miss out. What I could do, actually, I could switch to oratory, then switch off of oratory before I go to war again. I don't need to not have this when I'm at peace. And getting strategic propaganda would be enormously helpful right now, or sanction privileges. Is strategic propaganda going to include all integrated cultures, including from other culture groups? I always, every single campaign I do, I always end up asking, all right, you know what? I'm doing it, I'm opening Imperator Wiki. No one can stop me. Culture, all right. I don't know if I'm gonna find this information from the wiki, but I gotta, I gotta try. <laughs> I gotta know. It's a very, very important question. Uh, let's see, how do I search this? Unintegrated culture happiness. Okay, uh, pops that are in the same culture group as the primary culture. So this means this does not apply to pops in a different culture group. Okay, I'm very glad I checked that because I was actually wrong in what I thought would happen. So this would do literally nothing because there's no other cultures in my culture group except for me and my angry population are in a different culture group. So what I really need, where is it? Um, where is the culture group one? There's a culture group one around here somewhere. Here it is. I need legislative reform is what I really need. That's the one that I would want to have. Which means I could go to sanction privileges for the anti-corruption. I think in the case of that one governor, I, I kind of need to do that. Because this guy has... What? Again? Did I just told him to stop doing this. Is he? A, I thought he was prevented from doing it again. Oh my god, this fucking guy, I swear to god. I'm going to replace you. I swear I'm going to do it. <sighs> Do we have anyone else with finesse? No. I gotta start poaching already? God fucking damn it. I, I literally... Okay, alright. I don't want to lose this tax guy. Why is everyone's stats so bad? I guess that's... Male-only government this is what I get. Alright, this guy's actually really good. But I don't need manpower recovery speed that badly right now. Uh, what's his loyalty? He doesn't have the best base loyalty. He's deceitful. Oh, god damn it. Alright. Uh, is there anybody else? Please, I beg of you. Anybody with at least six finesse. I, please. Somebody's gotta have it. Alright. 
I, I may have to switch him with the tax guy. I'll switch him. I'll switch him with the tax guy. All right, fine. We'll do that. The choice of tools: favored materials. For millennia, our ancestors have used tools made out of various stones, obsidian, chief among them. The hard material has served them well and serves us too. In recent years, however, we've encountered a new type of material other people use: metal. Most common is what they call it is what they call copper, yet it is soft and can be bent by hand if thin enough. Nevertheless, copper has advantages too. It rarely breaks, and tools made from it are sharper. While we do not have any tradesmen that are currently able to mold the materials into tools, we can learn from our neighbors if necessary. From farther abroad, we have heard of yet another battle, even more incredible, people of all kinds singing its praises, bronze! We now have a choice to make. Do we want to cling to the traditions of our ancestors, preserving their wisdom and way of life, or do we embrace the rise of the new materials whose future is uncertain? So if I remember from the Domicite campaign, this is a very, very big choice between two very big big modifiers. So the traditional route, national unrest minus one, integrated culture happiness 8%, and loyalty plus five. That's pretty good. The national unrest in particular is a crazy bonus. Well, okay. You know what? It's not actually that amazing because we have... Okay, you know what? I may have overstated how strong that was. We have a lot of unrest, and plus minus one wouldn't make a huge difference, but it would ho it would help. Or, okay, yeah, we're going for this one. <laughs> I mean, this is, okay, so I guess the thing to keep in mind here, long term, this is a better bonus, but I don't actually think that I tend to struggle with research later on. I do struggle with loyalty early on, so I think I'd rather go for the short term bonus. And the 8% happiness for the hottie will be handy the entire campaign, or for the 600 months. So, Obsidian never failed us in the past. It's going to help a little bit. It's not going to fix everything. It is going to help a little bit. We still have food problems up here. All these slaves, it's really not helping. Oh, man. I think I need to cut my losses on the bitumen. Or, I mean, on the saffron. Yeah, let me... Okay, you know what? We're, we're, we're fixing this. I need to get this food going. Uh, grain or livestock? Let me let me try for livestock first. Make sure with Ebla, and then let's see on the monthly tick how it's looking. We're in the middle of winter, so it's going to be worse right now. That barely fixed it. What the hell? Really? Is the winter that bad? Where's my winter modifier? Oh, here it is. Um, oh, frigid climate reduces the food income by 40%. Holy crap. Yikes. Okay, we may have a problem with all these slaves here. Ugh. Okay. Alright, you know what? We're upgrading our livestock trade to grain. Anything more than grain? What's the one that it was more than... Oh, no, I'm thinking of rice from Terra Domina. Yeah, we gotta... Oh, oh man. I, I don't like having to do this. Alright, let's trade with Ugarit and uh, Saaru. It's gonna have to it's gonna have to do for now. We're gonna need we're gonna need some more food here. Definitely gonna need what we really need is to colonize this livestock tile, and that's gonna help a lot. Or this one as well. What's the climate like over here? Frigid over here, how about here? This one's not for We need to colonize uh, Palais right away. That's a huge priority. We need to get to 300 manpower super fast to fix our food problem. We need to bring in this sheep from the non-frigid location. God, this is brutal. I mean, we're in the winter, or yeah, we're in the winter time, so this is hopefully the worst it's going to get. But yeah, yikes! Already, st already struggling so much. Uh, I mean, this is uh, this is what I wanted. This is the um, and we also have the food bonus uh, policy as well, which is even crazier. It's just all the population here. Yeah, Kole. Wait, Kole minus two, really by itself? What's happening over here? It's all the slaves. Is Kole in particular worse than this one? You know what I should do actually. Now that I think about it, so the 40% is modifying the food base amount. What I should do is move all the slaves in Kole into Padawanda. Not that I would 
I would prefer to get the extra copy of Precious Metals, and it's easier to do in Calais. But I think what's going on here is the base food being eaten by the slaves, the 40% is having a worse effect here than it would be here because of the other bonuses happening here from the grain that's here. So I think this is technically going to improve my food situation, even though it seems like it wouldn't make a difference. Based on that theory, I'm going to go ahead and start moving some slaves over from Calais. I don't love doing this, but it's got to happen. We'll see after a monthly tick if that made a change. What are we at right now? 6.18. January to February, the food situation probably won't change dramatically. We got, we got double occupations there. Love that. No allies for Tarsa. Once we have some more money, I can also get some mercs and maybe fight Tarsa. Well, here's... Uh, are these guys fighting? Oh, um, Arson is attacking these guys too. You know what? Um, if I only had a claim on them, I don't though. These guys would still ally with me. I don't know if this would bring me into the war though. It might not. Okay, that did help. That did help quite a bit. I think the winter is probably the same effect right now. Yeah. You know what? Let me let me move more. Right, move pops from Kool-Aid. All right, there we go. I think this is going to help. In fact, I think this is going to help enough. I'm going to switch. Actually, no, I, I can't afford to lose the grain. I need to keep the grain going. Yeah, I need to keep the grain going. No risking it. We are playing the long game here. This is a this is a hard start. I knew what I was getting into. I can't uh, I can't complain now. You have food problems. You have Ten food capacity. That's just a sick joke. Why can't you give your food over to the capital? That would only be fair. All right, this is finally below one, so that's a good start. Five point two. Or, oh my god, point five two. What do we have over here? Point six three. Point five six. All right. Oof. I don't know if I don't know if I can afford to convert them yet. I may need to. Well, hold on. Let me think about this. I could just wait the. I could wait this out. Switch all these over to something like local autonomy or harsh treatment. But there's not really. I guess there's one citizen here. Are there any other citizens that would be demoted? Oh yeah, there's one over here too. I mean, I'm sure they're demoting already, right? No, they're not. Oh, it's actually moving over here. Okay, well, that's great. If you could demote, that'd be cool of you. What about here? I hear this guy's demoting. Okay, this guy's going to demote. It's going pretty quick as well. That's going to help a lot when you demote. Citizens and nobles produce a lot of unrest when they're wrong culture, especially nobles, but there's no nobles over here that I spotted, thankfully. <laughs> Ugh, all right, um, good. Let's resume. Go up to speed three. What's happened in the world? Anything interesting? Ebla expanding. Ugarit getting killed? I wonder if Ugarit's gonna die. That'd be interesting for this. Uh, oh, peace, it says over here. Uh, not too much consult. We're only a couple years in. Not too much consolidation yet. Gutium's getting obliterated, as usual. I've never seen Gutium do well. Because Gutium, by event, starts the, the game fighting all of the guys over in the, the Tigris Euphrates area, so. Pretty tough uh, campaign for Gutium. That'd be a challenging campaign for sure. They got some really strong bonuses, but they're up against basically the entire Fertile Crescent area, <laughs> or at least the Tigris Euphrates section of it. So, um, I'll trade with Kerr. It's the Penis Nation. Look at this. That is a certified dong moment over here. All right, trade with the Penis Nation. We're kind of a we're kind of a Penis Nation if you. Don't know what a penis looks like. Hmm. Yeah, not really, actually. Kind of just an amorphous blob. Uh, let's see. Let's just proceed here. Okay, this is sort of stabilizing slightly. We're already trading three grain. Sort of not much more we can do. We just need to get this colonized. We need the manpower for that. We're not getting much manpower at all. 
I could try to improve my manpower gain, but there's not much I can do. Okay, I'm gonna do something a bit weird. I'm gonna ask for military access with uh, with these guys because I don't really want them to declare war on me. I don't I don't mind uh, not being allied with them, but I want to reduce the chance, and I think they're less likely to declare if we have any treaty at all. So I'll just have that kind of going in the background just in case. I guess we'll see if that goes anywhere. Wasn't I gonna replace that governor? Did I completely forget about that? Oh, oh my god, alright, I need to I need to fix this. Alright. Who am I sending in? Alright, you please, please do not gain corruption. I swear to god, do not gain corruption. Local tax reduction, that's fine. Do not gain corruption. And also be above 33 loyalty when I put you in here. 50 loyalty, okay, that's a good start. Ooh, we're at 89 with this, that's pretty good. Pretty good for this campaign. We'll tentatively leave that as it is. We can send out some more slaves as well. All right, you with your corruption are fine to be put in here because then it'll just be a wage thing. It's not gonna affect loyalty. Okay, I think that was a successful switch. Provoking Hanno. <laughs> this is the guy that I just had here. They're having a fight now. <laughs> I think that's a coincidence, but that's a funny coincidence. Okay, I think we're fine. So I, I, don't have, I don't like having to deal with uh, regional governors as a tribe. It's just so frustrating. If I could just, like, give this to someone, I guess... Yeah, because selling... That's a, uh... Oh, no, I can do that. I guess I could give this to someone. Do I really need this? I don't really want this territory. You know what? I'm just going to sell this territory. Hey, uh, see Akiga, how do you like this territory? What would you give me for it? Okay, well, one gold is worth something. I don't think having this one territory is honestly worth it. I'm just gonna sell this. Alright. That's fine. Yeah, that's completely fine. Alright, um... I'll trade with these guys. Oh, did my precious metal buyer die? I think that's what happened here. With these guys too. All right. Scorn family. What? Huh? Oh, did the governor I just lose? Was he a, a family member? Oh, he probably was, wasn't he? All right. Now I can put him back in place here. All right. Problem solved. Okay. Bit of a strange, uh, strange strategic approach, but it it worked. You know, it was a solution. Peace was a. Uh, Maintained? <laughs> Question mark. Incompetent storage. Distraught officials from the province of Kizu are reporting that a not insubstantial portion of the province's grain reserves have been allowed to fester and rot away due to the ineffably incompetent practices used to store them. The local people are in uproar at their toil being wasted so frivolously and worry about having to go hungry. All right, where is Kizu? Kizu is this one here. Oh my god. That's a, they've got 10 food. That's all they have left. All right. Um, I lose money, and then nothing else happens. I don't really want to lose. This is about a month. Well, I've got a pretty good in income right now. Popularity for Ugaris would not be terrible. Three Tyranny is t totally fine right now. Loyalty for Kizi was actually pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to do this one. Crucify the Handlers. It's completely fine. Yeah, Tyranny in, in uh, Bronze Age is really not a problem. In fact, it might even be kind of good to have Tyranny with a, as being a tribe, but I'm, I'm not going to not gonna even think about that. I'll start getting ideas. I also need to improve my stability. This is going to improve everyone's happiness quite a bit. My low stability is kind of screwing everything up. So the question is as well, do I want to give these guys more rights? I think ultimately if my... I think the lowering of my stability isn't worth losing... Uh, gaining the specific happiness with these guys. Ultimately, I think I'm going to be able to ride the ride the line here. As my stability improves, I think things will get under control. I think we're going to be able to pull it off. It's going to it's going to be slow and steady, but 
Nice thing about Bronze Age Reborn is that there's no time limit. The game uh, takes technically ends, I think, in the year 5000, so we've got plenty of time. We're not going to hit the end of the game anytime soon here, so we kind of end when we want to. That's pretty good. All right, this is still problematic. Uh, what else can I do here? Uh, hmm. Are there any buildings that reduce... Oh, I should build peacekeepers. That's something I should probably build. 153 is expensive, though. That is very expensive. We could also move the capital back over here. But it's not fortified, so it sort of wouldn't matter anyways. I don't know. So for settlements, what can we do? Charwell Settlement helps the tribesmen happiness. And that's basically it. Provincial Legation would help with assimilation later on. I think the Peacekeeper would be a, a priority for the unrest. And the Provincial Loyalty. Yeah, I think I need Peacekeepers. That is the, uh, that is the situation. Let's continue here. Hmm. Okay. I guess I could generate a claim on Sawairi in order to have an enemy that I could probably defeat. I can't defeat them. Eight versus nine, not so sure. If they, have a th if they have a fourth cohort, I'm nervous that they might have a fourth cohort, then I might not win without an ally, and that would be obviously a problem. Then again, what is their levy composition? Spearmen, archers, and skirmishers. I think my, my levy composition might win against theirs. Let me double check. Archers. Okay, so good against archers. These are good against skirmishers. Okay, so we've got some bonuses. Skirmishers are bad against chariots, so... Spearmen, archers, skirmishers. It's gonna be mostly skirmishers and archers. Let me find an archer unit to look at the modifiers. Uh, show me an archer unit. Here it is. Archers are good against chariots, okay. But they're bad against heavy chariots. So, I think we have a... a unit type advantage, but if they have a fourth cohort, I'm not sure it's going to be enough. They have no allies at all. This wouldn't really help me that much, because I'd just be getting a bunch of Zavrinians. Although they are entirely in my regions, so that's a good... Uh, no, that's that's wrong. They have one bit outside my region. I could honestly just sell that over to Siakiga to get rid of it. I don't really want to be in the other region right now. I'm not sure what that gives me, though, is the issue. Oh, I should change my stance. You know, that would make me a lot of money. Let me do that. I've got enough PI now. Yeah, mercantile stance. There we go. 5.8987. That's a pretty... That's like almost a... It's got 0.75 gold improvement right there. That's pretty worth it. Look at my little mountain city spreading out over the, uh, the hillside here. That's kind of cursed. But uh, I suppose that's fine. God, this is really grim. I really need some more food. Uh, is it worth it to... Hold on, do I have any food modifiers? I have... I've, you know, I've got um, a bunch of Hurrian... Yeah, I need... Okay, I would prefer Luwian. Okay, switching over to U Uliyasi might be required for the food bonus. I really would prefer the pop capacity bonus, but I kind of think I need the food modifier. Yeah. Five stability. How much do I want to save my capital? Once it hits starvation, I mean, okay, once the capital hits starvation, normally the problem with starvation is loyalty, but the capital will always be loyal. But it will also hurt my economy. But it won't rebel. 
I think I need to be a little bit ruthless about this. If if Silver Mountain starts starving, my empire or <laughs> empire. Look at me talking. <laughs> my my loose and very unstable tribal conquest area won't immediately collapse. So I think I think what I would rather have. It's, the main thing is the stability cost. I was this when I started this video. I was so confident switching around deities with not even like worrying. But now it's like every shred of stability means so much. I need to just keep my stability going up. Also, when is this uh, expiring? I think it expires January first of uh, seven ninety. I think I need to do it again the moment it's ready. Gutium crushes the really Gutium one. After putting a cod to the torch a few generations ago, the ungrateful city states of Sumer and a cod forgot why a cod fell in the first place. Had to be reminded of the wrath of the Gutians once again. Gutium one, really? Oh my god. Holy fuck. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't see Gutium win very often. That's kind of rare. Normally Gutium loses because they're up against all the city states. Oh my god. <laughs> Yikes. Gutium, calm down. Yikes. All right. Um. This may be a problem for us later. We're not that far away from Gutium, all things considered. They're within diplomatic range, at least. Well, okay, no, they're not. They're sort of near range. Yeah, they're they're uh, they're about we're about halfway. Our range is about double that is where they are. Okay. Yikes. Okay, I wasn't expecting Gutium to win the uh, the rebellion from the city states. That could be a problem for us later on. I guess we'll see what happens. Gutium is usually pretty unstable. Yeah, they also have minus four dip rep. But look at those modifiers. Morale 10%. Tribesman output 35%. Whew. Sheesh. That's some good that's some good stuff right there. Alright. How is my A new seam? Our workers report a happy discovery, a new seam of valuable mineral wealth waiting to be taken from the ground in Osima. Initial reports are a little light on the details, but it seems this could be the largest vein ever discovered in Paduwandian history. Truly an impressive amount. Ooh. I'd be missing out on my obsidian, but I don't have axemen in my levees. So that'd be completely fine. I would like to do this. But I would be super duper bankrupt, and I'd be bankrupt for a very long time. If you could just check the seam again in a few decades, then I would do this, but I can't do it right now, unfortunately. Anyways, let the monthly take go by. How are we looking now? It's manageable. It's it's kind of okay. As stability rises, it's going to keep getting better. My plus 0.30 stability trend is really helpful. Really need that to continue at a nice, brisk pace. What's going on over here? Lemia is defeating Salia. Okay. They under siege? Nope. They under siege. Definitely not. Hmm. Yeah, having Padawada stay in my capital long term because of the food problems from frigid climate might not be super feasible. I probably will have to descend from the mountains sooner or later to somewhere a bit warmer. Even uh, Adonia would actually be a pretty okay spot, but I would like to have something coastal for even more food. Maybe uh, Wiz Uzi or Kulsten. I guess we'll see you later. A rebellion? Really? Already? Oh my god. The Sea Keegan Revolts. What's going on over here? Is it the province that's rebelling? I think it's the province that's rebelling. How did you screw this up so badly you have, have a rebellion already? Or is this a civil war? And this is not exactly a very large rebellion, so I think they're not going to be... Although, nine marshal on this guy. Hmm. Interesting. If I only had a claim on this land right here... Actually, no, I don't want that land because it's other region. I don't want this land. Hold on, wait. They lost... Yeah, they lost even more of their population, didn't they? If I just had a claim on these guys, they'd be really vulnerable right about now, and I could grab their grab their territory. Are they still in that war with this guy? They are. If this guy calls me in... Well, now the issue is he'd be the war leader, wouldn't he? So he'd be able to do the peace turn. Never mind, that's not going to work. That wouldn't work. I'm just going to wait. 
no tomfoolery. We need to accumulate our resources and just, you know, let time progress here. <sighs> I just, I'm, the, the urge for tomfoolery is great, but I must resist. <laughs> must resist it. All right, loyalty is sort of stabilizing around here now. Sort of. Very, very slightly stabilizing. I really need more food. This is dire. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> this is so bad. I need. Oh, yikes. Okay, so when, it, when this hits zero food, I'm trying to remember what happens when. Oh, come on. Um, oh, you know what? Open in the wiki again. I need to know. Food. I need to know. Is it just loyalty? What else is affected? <sighs> okay. In the base... I don't know if Bronze Age changes it, but in the base game, five minimum unrest, five local unrest. It obliterates the fort defense. 50% reduced fort defense. 25% supply limit. 75% reduced total pop capacity. That's really punishing. And then every territory also gets... Giant pop migration modifier and big pop uh, demotion speed. I mean, we'd actually get below our food consumption from that, so we would eventually even out. But that's obviously not the best way to lower the population. If I could just, um, if these slaves could just leave my land, that'd be really neat if that could happen. What I really need, I just need this sheep. If I get the sheep, I will either stop starving or nearly stop starving. I just need to get enough men to get the sheep. That's what has to happen. I'm really regretting that I didn't change the cost of, of colonization, but now it would feel like cheating if I changed it now in response to my current situation. So I'll just proceed with this campaign with the modifiers that I've changed and sort of just see what happens. I think I can figure something out. <laughs> uh. Let's just save up our resources. No need to do anything too hasty here. I think I'm fairly safe from Tarsa until we're approaching the end of the truce, which is great because they're the main nation I'd, I'd be scared of right now. Let's just continue assimilating. Keep it up. We are assim- or I mean, a continue converting, I mean. We are converting basically everywhere a little bit. That's a good start. Friends across the border. Our magistrate, Ithobal Ahrim, has friends far outside of our borders, often trying to use his network to the advantage of our nation. He believes his friendship with the high priest of the Sia Keegan revolt could be put into use of their opinion of us. I don't think I've ever seen a diplomatic opportunity I care less about. No, I'm not. No, <laughs> any or mind. Not befriending the revolts. <laughs> it's a terrible idea. Um, yeah, it's not gonna not gonna help very much. Uh, I need that sheep. <laughs> I really need the sheep. Or I need more import routes as well. I'm not gonna be able to get to 80 in time. Yeah, I really just need to. Do I get this right away? I think I do. I think I get it right away, but I get the the modifier there. What are you doing? You're fighting Zaruna. I think these guys are going to get killed by Zaruna. That's too bad. Yeah, they're even running out into the uncolonized. They know what's coming for them. I just need stability is what I need most of all right now. Alright. I also need more manpower, but I need to convert and assimilate, or I need to assimilate for more manpower, and that's just going to take time, you know? Cause Tan gets it. And this is going to change on reload, but if Cause Tan does get that, Cause Tan being the capital long term does make sense, because it'll have the Conqueror statue. I'll keep an eye on that, see if, I, see if that stays the same after reload. A vulnerable Tin Merchant. It is a curious case that we present to you today, Ugaris Chelbasid. There are stories of a tin trader circulating that you need to hear about. This merchant, an elderly man who has a touch of senility, traffics in tin and visits our trade ports. He travels alone, which is rare for someone that carries such valuable goods, and the quality of his stone is unmatched. This merchant refuses to answer where he finds this tin, however, claiming that it is a secret and he does not want anyone traveling with him. He's unafraid of bandits, he says. It would be a trivial thing for us to charge him a protection fee, we could force him to hire some of our men as guards. We wouldn't want anything unseemly to happen to him while traveling through Padawanda, after all. But he will undoubtedly be angered by our heavy hand in his affairs. 
That's a that's a quite a bit of money. That's I think half a year of income. Or I could get good natured. <sighs> this modifier doesn't help me at all on the chief, but this modifier would help me. But it would have consequences. But do I care about this man being mad at me for abusing him? Not when I get 27 gold, then I don't care so much. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing it for the nation. I'm, I'm doing it for the people. I gotta save my people. We're in a, a bad situation right now. We gotta, gotta take difficult decisions here for the good of the people. That's what I'll say as I roll around in my pile of money. My ill-gotten gains, as it were. Okay, now if we get the sheep, we will actually get fixed. We're in winter as well, so that's really, really good. That's a really good sign. Okay, just need to get that sheep, and we're going to all be fine. Ugh. All right, let me think about this. Two per month, we're at 73. So we need... Actually, let me do it after the tick. We're at 75. That's 25... No, 70, it rounded up, 76. 76, that's 24. 24 divided by 2 is 14. No. 12. 24 divided by 2 is 12. So that's one year. So at the at the beginning of next year, we can get the sheep. Ugaris. Ugaris Chelbasid has been on a steady and meteoric rise to importance within the state of Padawan. I mean, yeah, he's the chief, <laughs> that makes sense. But now he's practically a household name. Interesting. Oh, prominent. I think that's a good trait. Ooh, province commerce ten percent. That's really good for our um, our governorship. Five point zero seven. That's gonna maybe next month. A wandering master artisan. Uh, Ugaris Chelbasid. I must inform you that the master tinsmith has told everyone willing to listen of how the people of Padawan treated him. Our reputation abroad now reflects this. The extorted merchant ruined uh, Lefeta's reputation as a trade post, decreasing the trade volume. What did that literally actually do, though? Did this do anything? If the tin trade keeps flowing, I don't care what anybody says, slander shall not stop the tin trade. <laughs> Only um, the inevitable decline of the tin trade can stop the tin trade, as they say. It's a turn of phrase, is what they call it. All right, we're building up a nice PI stockpile. I mean, I need the 20 for this, and I, I cannot go below 20 as we approach that magic 300 number. What I could do, though, is spend my PI on other things, perhaps. I don't really think there's much I want to spend it on right now. Let's just keep it all close to the chest here and just sort of see what happens. I also could now hire mercs. Let me let me do the let me get the food thing fixed first, then I'm gonna worry about expansion. One thing at a time here. One thing at a time. Who would I fight against though next? My obvious target honestly is Tarsa. I'm gonna have less mercenary options now, aren't I? Who's around? So I know that Tarsa let me think about this. Who do I have? I've got three. I know Tarsa has eight cohorts, and they've not grown. And they haven't, yeah, they've not, they've basically not grown at all, so they have got eight, they've got at least eight cohorts, it might be less, because it was eight at the start. Seven or eight cohorts, I've got three, which means I really want a Merc Force of at least 500. 1k? Oh my god, I didn't notice that. This guy is 15 Marshal, that's okay though, I can still, I can, I can, uh, Time it so that I, I pull off the sack. Oh, this guy would solve all my problems. Five per month, especially if we start paying full price, or I mean paying extra wages, we would power through our remaining money really fast. We have to get him over here too, he's kind of far away. But lots of mercs are going to be further away than this guy. You know what, let me, let me get the sheep first and get the food situation figured out so that my, my capital isn't starving to death, and then we'll discuss... And also, this lets me build up more money. We'll have plenty of time before the truce is up where we can, in fact, actually, hold on. Cancel military access. 
Do I ever choose with them now? I don't think I do. I hope that didn't get them to start attacking me. I guess we'll see what happens. But anyways, um, I'm going to wait until I get my, my sheep resource so I can not starve to death in the Silver Mountains. And then I will consider my next move. Oh, man. Um... The other thing I could do as well, I guess I'm already trading entirely food, because I could, I could do internal trades for food to get more food up here, but that wouldn't make a difference because I'm already trading for three grain. I mean, I'm trading for two... Wait, hold on, what am I? I'm trading for three grain, that's right. I'm trading for three grain. So let's I get extra copies of grain. Is there any grain down here? I need surplus grain. Is there grain up here? No, I only get one grain from here. How about over here? No, no grain at all. I, I would need the trade slot anyways. Never mind, it wouldn't matter. I would need the trade slot in order for that to make any difference anyways. Just gotta keep waiting. Oh, I think this is going faster than I was expecting. I think we're gonna get there because it's rounding up each time. I think, you know what, I think it's actually over 2. I think it's like 2.6 or 2.7. And so the number is displaying as rounded down, but the actual amount is rounded up. Because we're getting there sooner than I think we were planning to. I think we're going to get to 300 um, on or before the start of the year. Fairly sure, at least. <sighs> yeah, I think we're definitely going to get there. I think next month, even. Turn me going down, AE going down, stability going up. That's really helpful. A feud. Two of our tribesmen have come forward today to ask for help settling ownership over a gold goblet they found. Abtamon Ugarid believes it belongs to him as he was the one to find it, whereas Yutpen Ahiram says it belongs to him as it was discovered on his land. Okay. Get loyalty. What do we have here? 64. So, okay, this is totally fine. 100 gold? Is that right? For 10 loyalty on both and 5 tyranny? That's kind of okay. What's this one? That's a lot of stability. Six stability? Also, it's less loyalty loss. Okay. Six stability, so that's... What is that? Let's round, let's round it to be about 33 stability. I mean, it's not that much, but let's, let's say... Let's round it up to be generous. 33 stability per month. That's, what, 18 months? That's about a year... Literally, it's a year and a half worth of stability. And we're also not getting that much, so it's actually more than that. Let's round it to maybe 20 to 22 months... So almost two years worth of stability in one bulk amount, and it helps with the happiness right away. Ooh, or the 100 gold. Okay, putting aside the context of probably wanting the stability more than a gold, in terms of the value amount, 100 gold. So we got 5.3 per month. 100, so that would be what? 20, about 20 months? So it's actually about the same amount, which is a rare... Imperator to Rome, fair trade-off. And then the difference is we gain tyranny and also lose more loyalty, or I think I think we need the stability. It belongs to the gods. Oh, love it. Oh, look at that. Under 50, under 0.50 in loyalty loss. That's incredible. Happiest, uh, happiest Hattian uh, underclass right here. Look at that. And they're getting proselytized. Teaching them the ways of the Luians. Or, I mean, the... Yeah, we're the Luians. The ways of the Luians. <laughs> Alright. Um, what am I doing? We've got enough. Alright. Please. Please fix it. 2.94. That's below 3. Maybe it takes a month to, to calculate... I gotta hope that's what happens. <laughs> this does sort of fix my name, Padawan, and now you can see my name. That's a nice change for sure. That's always important. Got plenty of PI left over. Manpower is completely gone, so that's great. Yikes. We can still raise... Oh, we got four cohort... Oh. Oh, wait, that's right. Oh, wait, no, these are... Oh, shoot, I didn't even think about that. If I'd colonized a place that had um, Hattians, I'd, I'd get more... That might have been... Mm, I needed the I needed the, the food, though. Because this isn't a food resource, and neither is this. So I, th I think I made the right call so that my place wouldn't starve. But I did miss out on my first colonization being a Hattian location. 
Okay, it's fine. We, we have to make tough calls. We're making tough strategic calls. All right, with my remaining... Okay, I, I guess at this point... The thing is, I could use the army with the mercs for one fight and just basically not have manpower to replenish. It's pretty risky, though. And who would I target? Tarsa? Here's the thing, right? Against Tarsa, Tarsa has no allies at all. Oh, I could even take Silver Mountain. I'd probably want to focus on this one, though. Because then, well, I guess... Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I think the Silver Mountain one might even be better, though, because it's, like, easier for me to hold, I think. It's over the river. Do I hire the mercs now? I want to. I kind of want to do this before Tarsa picks up an ally. That's what I'm kind of worried about. If I wait too long, Tarsa's likely to ally with somebody. I think I'll hire the mercs. I have to start paying for them though to get their maintenance up, or at least. Well, how about? Hmm. All right. Let me wait one month and verify the food situation is resolved. I'm not going to do this until the food situation is resolved. It's very very important that the food situation is under control. I'm not going to war if I'm going to have starvation, or I'm less likely to go to war if I have starvation, which I don't think I... I think that's the way I'm going to approach it. I guess we'll see. I might change my mind. <laughs> um, how does addition work? Because I thought three was more than... okay. Why is it not taking all the food? What's the issue here? Oh, it's because it's being modified by the Kilo Year event. <sighs> okay. All right. That's fine. I forgot about that. Yeah. The Kilo Year event is going to reduce it by 35%. All righty. Fair enough. I suppose I should have thought about that. It did actually reduce the amount, though, by a fair bit. So, And we're in winter, so... I'm going to consider this close enough in terms of fixing it. And also, if I were to capture this, I'd get the... Okay. I now have an even greater reason to attack in order to get the Silver Mountain section, because this is more cheap. All right, we're hiring the mercs. Please don't be hired by somebody else, please. Yes. All right. Now, I guess the other question is, should I hire the cheaper 700 mercs? I kind of like this army composition more, and they're closer, and they're cheaper, and I don't think I need a thousand mercs. Actually, this is... let's see. Actually, this is 12 cohorts. This is not... oh, it's rounding down, I see. Okay. And the 15 marshal would ensure victory. This is a very, very strong force right here. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about running out of money. But as long as I sack... As long as I sack, because I've got Ufen, Ufen uh, to sack, and then also Tarsa can get sacked as well. As long as I'm careful about who's there, I think I can sack it successfully. This would be the safer option. The risky option is to bring in the less experienced, smaller army. This is almost half the size, but it is a lot cheaper. I think i got to go all out. Tarsa is a very powerful opponent. Here's the thing, right? So once I dispatch Tarsa and I take all their land... Who do I border? These guys only have, because they're Tarsan culture, only 24. I already am stronger than them as it is. These guys, I'm stronger than already. These guys are going to get killed, and I'm strong. I'm about as strong as them. Let's see. These guys are going to take over their neighbor, and these guys will be my new main uh, opponent, but they're in the other region. Oh, they will be in this region once they take those guys over. That's the problem. I think that's a future misadventure problem. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna focus on that. I think I need to. Tarsa is the main danger that I face right now. They don't like me. They've insulted me. I think they're gonna attack me after the truce is up. I gotta. I gotta strike them uh, preemptively. All right. And to take Tarsa out. Ultimately, I think I need to play it safe. This is a campaign where I'm gonna have to take risks, and this is a, a situation where I can choose to not take a risk. I need to choose to not take a risk. It's going to be very, very expensive once I start paying for my army fully. I can... Uh, let me go to defaults, and then I'll hire them under default. Oh, this is going to be so expensive. It's going to be so, so expensive. I guess I may not need to raise morale, to be honest, with a number this large. I can probably get away with not raising morale. I think that's the way I'll justify this. I'll be... I'll go down to 100 and also be decreasing by more than my income. So I'll be on a ticking clock, but I'll have quite a long time. 
I should be around negative one or negative two per month at the most. And I, I'll have a hundred left, so this should be okay. As long as there's no catastrophic problems in the meantime. All right. Look at this guy right here. Oh my god. Look at that unit. That's really cool. With the armor. Hell yeah. All right. Um... I think this is the right... No, this is the wrong. Put it on envelopment. Alright, just just come up here. Um, I think the move, honestly, is that we raise all of our forces, declare a war, and immediately run into Tarsa to cap it, either before they raise or attack them as they raise there, so that they have limited chance to actually do anything. And then, if we were to take Tarsa... I guess I could also have... I guess I could split away one for one unit to go grab Kapasi as well right away for War Score. We'll have our forces move over anyways and worry about it later. They're gonna gain the morale on their way over, so we'll we'll worry about it the exact way we organize it once uh, we're we're at that point. But yeah, I need to take Tarsa out. It's been fun dealing with Tarsa, but I've got a they're they're one of my main um they're one of the main dangers now. Hold on, Mero. As in Marrow from Egypt? Hold on. Pause everything. I need to I need to verify. Is that Marrow from Egypt? No, no, no. Marrow's not on this map. Marrow's too far south. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say, is that Egypt Marrow? Mucus. Okay, where where is this? Show me show me the flag. Come on, please. I gotta find out. Okay, this guy doesn't... Oh, he's Canaanite. Okay. Oh, wait, hold on. Mero. Um, Mucus. Where's Mucus? Oh, here's Mero. Okay, Mero. Mero's not far away at all. Okay. I Mero... Because Mero was the name of that, that city in uh, in Egypt, but it's it's too far south for this map. It'd be, like, down here somewhere. Okay. Anyways, time for the next omen. Although, actually, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. We're going to do the uh, five-year episodes, most likely. Even though we're not playing as a republic, this will have the omens uh, govern each episode. But that's going to be it for this first episode of the um, of the Hadian uh, campaign. Uh, this has been really fun. Uh, this is just kind of a fun return to form for me of doing, these, uh, doing a campaign um, with a... Uh, without like a super tightly organized structure just kind of playing for fun I'm, I'm having a lot of fun honestly i feel like this is a tough start but i'm doing i think pretty good so far it's kind of fun to have immediate food problems and deal with this extreme culture situation this is a kind of difficulty i haven't really played a full campaign with uh since the monopia campaign and i'm just really excited for a genuinely hardcore experience here by bronze age standards i think bronze age tends to be an easier gameplay experience than uh terra Andromeda, for example if you are playing as a stronger nation, but this is going to be a very, very tough start, and I'm very excited to play this all with you. But that's going to be it for this first episode of the Hatian campaign. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.